Hi guys, and welcome back to episode 40. We're over the hill now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> of the Kit and Krista podcast. Uh, we're maybe over the hill, but so is Wii U. This is a special episode. It's a special episode. It's 10 years since the Wii U first launched. Yes! We were there. Oh yeah. Uh, we are telling you the untold story of the Wii U launch today. Oh man, that was a quote unquote special time at Nintendo. There was definitely some good things, but a lot of very uh, bad slash- I'm Just staring off into the distance blankly. Things. Remembering it all. Remembering it all. Maybe we can get some healing going 10 years later from that um, very oh quote unquote gosh. special time at Nintendo. Um, as usual, everything on this channel is made possible by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much. We cannot do this without you. You are literally making all of this happen. So thanks for supporting us. If you have not checked us out on Patreon, we are patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. We have tons of different offerings for all of our patrons. Starting as low as two dollars. Two dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. easy to get in. Easy to get in. You get early access to episodes of, of the Kit and Krista podcast. Could be listening to this very podcast a day early. That's right. That's, That's right. Cool. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of bonus Q&As, answering exclusive questions only for our Patreon members. And we do really fun monthly meetups as well for our Patreon members. And it's been awesome getting to know our wonderful community. And we hope that you guys will, will join us there. Yes, please. It's a great time. Um, all right. On to more Wii U things. So speaking of the Wii U, a little, little warm-up to the podcast today. Out now, Super Kit and Krista 64, we ranked oh, oh boy. the attractions in Nintendo Land, all uh, 12 of them. All 12 of them. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been probably nine and a half to ten years since we've it's played yeah. Nintendo Land and, and having to, like, reconnect everything with the Wii U and holding that gamepad again in our hands was kind of surreal for me. I don't know for oh, really? you, but I I just felt like it like transported me back to that time that mm. I hadn't really thought about for for a really long time to be fair. All right. I don't know if it was like a mental thing where like it was so traumatic that my like my mind was helping me <laughs> cope <laughs> block, by blocking block it out this? as like some sort of PTSD, yeah. huh. VUSD or something like that. <laughs> but like it was crazy cuz when we were playing those games like the weird little memories, core memories perhaps, right. started flooding back mm. to me. And I just like, I was transported back to like being in that demo room. We did a lot of those demos. Right? Yeah. Like showing media or like, it, there wasn't even like an influencer program no. at the time, creator program. It was just media, like very traditional stuff. Like showing people the game, playing some of those mm -hmm. those games over and over and over big again. Big smile on your face. Hamming it up. Yeah. yeah, trying to look excited when you played like that stupid ninja whatever <laughs> castle yeah. something like a million times. It was weird. It was like a surreal experience. Uh, well, now that we're a few days past it and the video's out, I, I feel like I got bullied by you in some of these rankings. What? I'm a little, I mean, I'm a little retroactively upset at you. You are? Yeah. For which one? I don't know, just like the whole like top five. I feel like I was forced into making some deals, some, con some concessions I didn't want to make at the bargaining table. Excuse you? Yeah. Well, if you can't stand up for yourself, it's not it's I'm upset not for fault. Luigi's Ghost Mansion. Oh, uh, Luigi's That's ghost. number one. That's number two. Number one. Watch the videos, number two. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Chase, Ugh. the definitive winner. So um, bland. Mayhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like cream of the crap, as they call it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it. It sounds gross, but it's true. Oh. Um, we're, but yeah. we're already hitting up the swear jar. Okay. That's not a swear word. Depending on what house you grew in, it was. That was a swear word in your I house? Could, I absolutely could not say that Are word Are you serious? House. Yes. What about H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-W-H-E-
Yeah. So we bought a bunch of those. <laughs> of course. We so we did it. We're doing this fun video where we're gonna surprise each other right. with weird Nintendo Switch accessories that we found online. And I was very specific with you, and you seem to not have liked this criteria where I was like, you need to make sure to buy stuff that you think that I will like. Right. And you were like, I don't care what you like. I'm buying you whatever I, did, I want. You'll, you'll see. I, d I did care about what you like. You did? Um, oh, that's Some of these, I first. think, now that I've seen them with my own eyes, they're actually kind of neat. Oh. Um, I think you're going to be surprised, though. I, like, I wasn't sure if I should go the... Just like the random, like, this is just the weirdest thing ever. I'm going to buy this for you yeah. just because it's novel. Yeah. Or like, this could be like maybe useful okay. in certain instances. So I kind of try to like split the difference on that. So hmm. I don't want you to have just a bunch of random like tchotchkes. You don't. Clearly, you, you don't know what I like, so. I know exactly what I, you like. Uh, <laughs> we're going to find out. <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, jeez. Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> More Star Wars. <laughs> um, well, we got what? We got eight things we're going to be going through. We got some yeah. stuff. Who knows? Maybe yeah. people will get. We're getting into the, the gift buying season. Maybe people will find this something. Like, some of the items are legit good. What do they call them? Like stocking stuffers. Oh, stocking stuffers. I like a good stocking. Did you have? Stuffer. Did you have stockings growing up? I did. Really? Yeah. Do you oh. have stockings? Well, it depends on what you're. You need a place to put the stocking. I don't have a fireplace anymore. I, I don't either. In my old house. At my current house. I have nowhere to put a stocking. Wait, you don't have a fireplace? It doesn't have the mantle thing on top. What about just some I'm sort no, of like... What am I going to... Don't nail no, it exactly. to the fireplace. Right. Yeah, I don't have a fireplace, so I just put it across my um, my bar, oh. like my little kitchen counter. Yeah. Um, but I do even do little stockings for my, my pets. So Chili Chatter and, and Momo the cat, oh. they have little stockings, yeah. and then I put like doggy treats and cat okay. treats in there for yeah. them to have on Christmas morning. It's really cute. It's nice. Yeah. I'm I'm pro stocking. I'm pro stocking. You seem too. you seem unclear on my stance. Did you do you have a stocking that maybe we should talk about this later because it's, like a good, it's a little a tad tangent. early. Tangent, a little yes. tangential here. Uh, Back to Wii U though, real quick. Last thing to say about that. We were on Retronauts, uh, yes. which is a excellent, excellent podcast. So honored that you to should be check out. So legitimized on Retronauts. Right. I was so honored. I was like, oh, I'm part of gaming history now. And uh -huh. their criteria is that when something is 10 years old, it's officially retro. So the yeah. Wii was officially retro. Officially retro they invited now. us on. That episode, I think, is out now. Yes. Um, so you should check that out. Yeah. And uh, let us know what you thought. We're going on even even more Wii U memories, ramblings, yeah. Today. all of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. But it was great to... I think what was cool about that is we were able to see it through like a, a different perspective. Right. So we were on with uh, uh, Bob, Bob and Henry, and Henry. who yeah. at the time were in media. Right. Um, before they... And Henry we worked with a ton. Both of them I, yeah. I remember seeing all the time. Right. And they were like, oh yeah, I was at this review event and I was like, I completely we were at this forgot about this. And this is how right. we felt right. during that time. So we did have kind of two different views it on it. It was two different perspectives yeah. like yeah. from an insider perspective to like an outsider perspective. Right. So it was pretty cool. Um, I didn't realize like some of, you know, like their sort of interesting or like the, the the attachments they have outside of it being just like a console launch. It's like this is like some stuff that I think we'll get into in the in the yeah. you know the the topic today, but it's like things happening in your life yeah. at that time also um kind of color your impression of that time. Right. Which is really interesting. Anyways, right. yeah. That was exciting. I mm -hmm. was very honored to be on Retronauts. Yeah. Um some one other little Big thing that's going on. This episode sponsored by Slick Deals. Whoa, oh boy, Slick Deals! You guys know that we love Slick Deals. We are big fans, and they have been um, big supporters of this channel. So thank yes. you, Slick Deals, so much for sponsoring this episode. Um, if you guys don't know what Slick Deals is, it is a browser extension and a mobile app, and it is a huge shopping destination with over one billion visits annually. A billion? A billion. Whoa! In the Bs, not the Ms. Wow. Um, and basically, it's super easy to use. You download this browser extension, and it just kind of ha has a little tab that's, you know, in the back, running the background, and whenever you're shopping or looking for stuff, it gives you a little prompt that's like, hey, you can get this exact item that you're shopping for at a discount. It finds these coupons for you. There's a huge community of people, like actual real life people finding these deals, which is awesome. Why not? I may have been doing some early uh, holiday shopping yeah. this weekend 
and used the extension to get some discounts. Exactly. Wonderful. This is the perfect time, actually. If yes. you're doing your, your holiday shopping, you're doing probably buying a lot of stuff, or if you're like searching for a deal too, Sleep yeah. Deals has- um, Keep an eye out for it. Yeah, you. it has like deal alerts, mm -hmm. tons of ways for you to like customize like alerts. So if you're like, I'm looking for this specific item for myself or somebody else, you can see when it goes on sale. It's not too late now because you'll have time to like get, wait for the deal, too get late? the deal, and get it before the holidays. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's never too late. November, it's not too late yet. It's not like <laughs> December 24th and you're like, Stressing uh -oh. me out already. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know if slick, slick Deals can help you on December 24th. Maybe they can, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but that, that, that's a good thing to start getting on now, for sure, for holiday, Indeed. for holiday time. Um, we will put the, uh, browser extensions in the description below and we're also doing a little giveaway yes for you guys maybe you can give this as a gift for right. somebody um so we've already done um a we or excuse me not a we <laughs> a wii u an e-shop e card yep we did a game Xbox pass game pass so of course yeah. this time we had to do a playstation playstation yes. time so um as always for our giveaways Give this video a thumbs up. Be subscribed to our YouTube channel, which if you're watching this on video, that is the channel you are on right now is, is youtube.com slash Kit and Krista. Um, leave a comment below and let us know what PlayStation game you are going to play with your new PSN bucks. Yeah. Is it God of War? Maybe yes. Tell us in the comments below and we'll pick a winner at random and you will get a lovely gift card that we sourced through Slick Deals. Excellent. Awesome. All right. So all the links are below for you guys. And check it out. Here we go. It's time for the main event. Uh, oh boy, the our, main event. And I was saying, we so we are combining uh, story time and never a minute. It's a long week, one. Because this could be long. Yeah. This and is exhaustive. Gonna, this is going to be a long one. Right. Yeah. And I think we should specify the time frame in which we're oh, talking sure. about. Because we also have like... I mean, the, the Wii U era spanned yeah. many, many we're, years. We're not going to do the entire story of the Wii U here. Yeah. But we're going to do from when it was announced to right around when it came out. Yeah, the launch, the launch. timing. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but there's still a lot there, so yeah. Well, why don't we start with, like, what is your earliest it. memory of the Wii U? Yeah. So my earliest memory... Um, there was, you know, hardware launches at Nintendo were a pretty big deal. And of course, Nintendo, even in those Wii U days, more so now than ever before, but very much into like the confidentiality oh, thing. Yeah. Like not a lot of people, it's more one of those things where not everybody in the company knows when a new system is coming out and you sort of have this like need to know basis. So I'm sure I wasn't the first to be told of, plans for this but the marketing team especially our team on the communications side we did get to know when products were launching pretty early on because we had to like basically write all of the the communication like all the stuff to tell other people describe this thing to other people right. so they did give us like we were pretty much like in the early list so i have a very clear memory of when there was the, this meeting scheduled it was very cryptic it was like a code name like Discuss X, Y, Z or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I remember going into that meeting and it was interesting because that meeting had sort of a cross section of all different people from Nintendo, like even product people that I normally don't work with at Nintendo were there and also our agency was there as well. So I was really like, what is this about? And it kind of had a suspicion that, okay, maybe it's about the launch of this new system. Uh. And... The only thing that they told us in that meeting was a new system is coming and this is the name. We didn't see any renders of it. We hadn't, we didn't see any like any sort of visual of it. It was just like, this is coming. This is sort of like some very light details and here's the name. And when they told us the name was Wii U, I could feel like my heart sinking. <laughs> Already off to a bad start. Yeah, I just was like, I don't get it, you know? Because, I mean, obviously the Wii is so successful, you know, the brand is so recognizable. I can see why potentially it's good to connect the next thing to something that people already know what it is. Right. But just the, the whole, the, the you part, like, it just felt so odd. Like, it wasn't immediately clear to me, like, what the system was yeah. by the name. Right. And obviously, if we had a crystal ball, we could have saw... 
you know, months, years, <laughs>、yeah. years into the future that that was gonna be a huge problem、yeah. for the system. But I just like my heart sank, and I I th- must have had like a lot of people tell me that I have very bad poker face, and like if I don't like something, you see it right on my face and. Um, I remember in that meeting, I must have had a look on my face because someone stopped the meeting and was like, "Do you not like this name?" Like directly at me, and I was like,、um, "It's a little confusing for me, but maybe that's just me." Like I didn't want to like insult. If and that someone... person was Mr. Awada.、No. <laughs> <laughs> like if someone was in the room, was like, "I was responsible for for naming this thing." I was like, "Oh shoot, I just insulted、yeah. you." You know, I didn't want to be like rude, but. Clearly, I was like, I had like probably like a distaste, distaste looked on my face, like, oh, this is bad.、Um, so I was, it was like really awkward. Like it wasn't exciting, right? You know, it didn't feel like, like, oh, I'm so excited for this new system to come out. But my first impression was like, uh oh, this sounds confusing and bad,、yeah. even without seeing it. Yeah. So yeah. that was that was not not a good, very good start. <sighs> yeah. That so the the system was announced、uh, April 2011. And my most vivid earliest memory was we would always go up to Redmond before E3, and obviously this was going to be a big unveiling at E3, see、yeah. the Wii U for the first time.、Um, so it was our first time seeing it in person. We were in Redmond to to get our hands on all of the product, and、uh, it was a big group, and it was being led by Treehouse,、um, and they were showing it to us, and we saw a lot of the attractions that eventually went into、mm-hmm. Nintendo Land, and basically、yeah. everything that we ended up having in the booth. And they spent a lot of time explaining, like, well, here's you know, here's the gamepad, here's what it does, here's some things you can do with it that you can't do with other systems. And I spent, I mean, we spent a good amount of time playing it. You know, probably a couple hours, and、yeah. I came away from it's like, well, this is definitely different. Yeah. But did I like it? And、right. I wasn't sure. And and again, there was just like that pang of doubt. Yeah. Of like, I don't know what I think about this. Yeah. Exactly. In a, in a way where I probably should have been more excited, like, oh, this is my first time playing this unannounced new console. Exactly. Like, are you joking? This should be incredible. But I did have some just little feelings of like, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. That's exactly right. I think it was a weird, like it was almost like this in, inside voice telling you, like, I know I should like this and be more excited, but I just I'm not for some reason.、Right. And that that was for me. That's definitely the name part of it. But I also remember that event where we went and like got you know hands on of all these different things and held the gamepad for the same time. I remember holding the Switch from the, for the first time, or even like holding、yeah. the 3DS for the same time for the first time, and was like. Overjoyed with、yeah. like, oh, this is so cool. Even if it was like novel and、mm-hmm. stuff like that, I was like, wow. It just didn't have that like those sparks yeah, at all. Yeah.、Um, with this one, it was like very, very odd. And I think I had a feeling, which I think turned out to be wise, which was,、um, you know, I could understand what they were doing with the, the game pad in those Nintendo Land experiences because, like, all right, these were built for this, but it's like. Not every game is going to be this kind of. No, I see something that you don't、right. kind of experience. That's a little and, bit limiting. And、sometimes. I started to wonder, like, what are the uses for other kinds of games? Yeah.、Um, you know, more more traditional kinds of games that we've seen for our, our entire lives up to this point. Is this going to completely upend the way that people make games? And I think that turned out to be true. Where a lot of developers were just like, I don't know, I'll put a map on it, and it didn't end up being. As much of a centerpiece、yeah. as Nintendo wanted. Exactly. Like even in those early days, I think we even asked the question、yeah. during those E3 demos because we were like, "Oh, probably like media and other people are going to ask that same question. Like,、right. tell us like what is the philosophy, what is the vision, you know, for this for for the gamepad, which is like pretty, it's unique and and pretty untraditional." But like, what what is Nintendo's vision for this? Right. And I don't honestly. I I'm trying to think back to those conversations, and I don't think we ever got like a clear. It was never、answer. that great. An it answer. It was not that. And we. I remember we trying to like write like, like we write we would write Q and A's、yeah. for E3 back in the day, and it's like how do we PR spin this? Right, so it、right. sounds a little bit better because it wasn't like very. It wasn't a very strong footing that we that Nintendo had on like. The legitimacy and like the functionality、right. and the purpose of this thing. Yeah, and it was also like, what? 
was there really a problem that existed that you're that, solving? That this is solving, right? It seems it seems to be solving a problem that kind of you're doesn't exist. I mean, we yeah. have dual screen gaming, you know, on the DS mm -hmm. and and the 3DS, and people like that. Sure. But is this, you know, I, like the Wii introduced like such a different way of playing yeah. that was so immediately intuitive, and I think this was in a lot of ways kind of the opposite, right? Of right. That. Exactly. Um, you know, in that in that direct um, that aired you know, leading up to that E3, there was a lot of like high concept stuff. And we heard a lot of this also from Mr. Awada directly, where like he had been reading these books. And there was one book I remember him talking about that was basically, you know, families today, you know, they might all be in the same room, but they're all just on their same screens. Like they mm -hmm. might as well not be yeah. together at all. It's called like together alone. Right. And he had this like idea that. of like, oh, the Wii U will be like this focal point of the living room and everybody's going to be, you know, doing stuff on it and, you know, solves the problem of people fighting over the TV. Mm -hmm. um, there was also this, like, line that, that kept getting repeated and repeated, which was wider and deeper, oh, yeah. which I uh, <laughs> have to laugh at because I, I, I have the mind of a 12-year-old. <laughs> but it was, again, this was part of the high concept thinking was, well, you know, the wider represents... You know, you can make a very simple game on this because it has a touch screen, mm -hmm. and we've seen with the DS that. And it know, works with the Wii remote, so right, it has like the right. motion. And so all that stuff. for the more casual audience, you can do that, but like you Safety can, or you, whatever, you yeah. can also make the deeper part of it for yeah. you know real video game fans. Like I think Zombie U might be an example of that, where you're like sports. multitasking on the different screens. Um, a more complex game experience than had right. been possible before. Um, I, I kind of see where they were going with that, but ultimately there just weren't that many deep game experiences that, that like, paid that That off. actually came to fruition, yeah. Right. I did really, I think that was the, that was like sort of part of the healing now. <laughs> like, we, I think I really bought into the philosophy when I was yeah. at Nintendo during that time. I don't know, obviously you have to convince yourself you know, while you're working at the company, like do whatever you can to make this product successful and, and convince yourself to do your job every day, yeah. even though you're looking at all the negative things out there about it, right? So you, you do have to like do that for yourself yeah. personally. But the other thing that I found to be like really interesting, just from like a learning about someone perspective is Mr. Wada's thinking around this. Because he truly did have this like deeper sort of, I don't know, idea about, like, what video games, what, like, entertainment should be, like, what the yeah. future of that is. And I kind of appreciated that part of it because he didn't take the easy path and say, like, oh, just make another, like, HD video game system. Right. Like, who right. cares, you know? So that that part where he was very, and this was, like, very much his MO. Like, he was always reading. He was always sharing, like, a lot of the stuff that he was learning about with the rest of us. And he was very involved in like coming to um, Nintendo of America all the time during the early planning phases of Wii U. I remember he was in our office all the time. We had lots of meetings where he was sharing like all this data about how families were interacting in the living room and why Wii U like kind of is, you know, positioned to solve this problem. Um, so there was like so much of him and his philosophy yeah. sort of like, in the system and that part of it i actually really like that and i really like respected him yeah he was that. a big believer of like the red ocean blue ocean concept yeah which is we like, all read that book if, <laughs> if you just go into a crowded market everybody's gonna fight it out it's gonna be a bloodbath that's why it's red right and you do have to remember like the second half of the Wii life cycle, everybody tried to come up with a motion. Yeah. Like the, the con move. connect. Yeah. I mean, we laugh mm -hmm. at connect now. Connect was a huge hit. And the yeah. They sold so many of those. Yeah. And yeah. PlayStation had their thing, which was, you know, not as successful, but the motion control market was getting saturated. So I could see why they needed something, another, Else. a new hook. Yeah. And I, I, I share your feeling too, where I had those initial inklings of doubt, but I just kind of pushed those away because it was like, we're Nintendo, we make these hits, like, we made the Wii, we made the DS, like... There's always skeptics we're out not there, gonna, too. Yeah, like, this is what people do with Nintendo stuff. They hate on it, because it's different. But it sells. But this is gonna be, this is gonna be fine. Like, I shouldn't worry about this. Yeah, I, same thing. And I was totally, like, lulled into a sense yeah. of security by Mr. Iwata. Like, truly. Right. Right. Like, I truly was like, I buy this. Like, I totally, I'm on board with his, like, 
philosophy. Right. Like, yes, this is definitely a prob- problem we need to solve. This like idea of being, you know, together alone or alone together, whatever. Yeah. Um, I was like, yes, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in. You know. So yeah, even though we kind of had these early experiences where the name to me felt like very strange, and yeah, even the sort of the early hands-on stuff was like a little lackluster. Um, just listening to him talk, that man can convince anybody to do yeah, anything, honestly. Yeah. So just listening to him talk about like the vision or whatever, I was like, right. yes, <clears throat> I get it. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, the E3 came and that's where we started to see some of the problems really play out. And yeah. there was that, there's that famous video, which was, you know, in the press conferences when we were still doing press conferences yeah. that we were both at. Um, where they showed it for the first time. And you can, in retrospect, I can understand the mistakes that were made. Yeah. Because they were talking about the new controller. Right. And that's what was front and center. And you didn't really see the, the hardware, hardware the at all. Console, yeah. And I can understand now why people were like, oh, that's just an accessory. For the Wii. For the Wii. Yeah. And, you know, they were showing off these, you know, little experiences that, didn't look terribly different. And they were using like Wii Sports as an example. That's true, um, yeah. Which didn't help. And, you know, they were jumping around to all sorts of things. But that really, people came away from that with a lot of questions. Yeah, I think that set, that like plus the name, plus the the subsequent couple days where they were playing like right. not real games. Yeah, we were calling them experiences. Yeah, they were like, do not ever call we these were, games. Like, they were like lecturing us about it. Do not do it. it like, <laughs> they were so It was mad. almost like yeah. to the level of don't say Wiimote. Right. It was like that kind of These are like, not games. These are experiences. Although what we were showing became the games. It was exactly. like New Super Mario Brothers U was, was a demo we had. All these, right. all these right. Nintendo Land games were, yeah. were demos that we had. Um, yeah. They did yeah. have like the fake HD Zelda thing. Right. Which was like, you know. Just basically a cutscene. That was basically a cutscene. That was meant to like, show like the, the That was like supposed the to be graphics. called a tech demo. Remember right, that? Right, yeah. Right, right. We did a tech demo. That was the first time too where where I when you know, since I've been at Nintendo, that was the first time where we didn't show an actual game, sort of, I felt, like during yeah. the of E3. Usually and Nintendo is very much on this train these days, um, is like we need to show games that are coming out in the same calendar year yeah. and we need to in an E3 or any sort of like live experience like that the the whole like cadence is like you announce the stuff and then you put the controller in somebody's hand and they play the game right away and that yeah. game's coming out this holiday yeah like that is the the timing and this was so not that at all well the thing didn't come out until November 2012. Yes. So there was another two E3. Years. We had two E3s. Which is so unlike <laughs> it was so Nintendo. Weird. Yeah. I that, mean, that didn't happen before Wii U and it didn't happen after Wii U, but for some reason. Yeah, I, I it's such a puzzling thing. They may have been feeling I mean, nobody ever outright told us like, here's why we're announcing this two years early. Right. You know, that people think that the Wii was just this runaway success from day one until the day it stopped. Yeah. The That's, second half of the Wii life cycle was, was, was kind of rough. Yeah. Like Towards the end, too, it was like getting pretty desperate times right. at Nintendo. Right. So I wonder if they were just like... Feeling the heat. Hey, the next thing is coming. Here it is. We got a few more Wii games to keep you going, but... Be prepared. Hold, hold, on, hold on. Just hold on. Yeah. Because we got this thing. That's true. Because towards the end of that, I remember the Wii marketing that we were doing was like really desperate. It was yeah. like trade-ins, which we never did before. Right. It was like the stupid like, little like colors. We got, I was like, oh, here's here's a Wii remote that's got like Mario's overalls on. It's like, what are, yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah. It's like, what's the mini? <laughs> yeah, the mini. The mini. They were like having They really it. like having big and small things. Well, that, <laughs> like, that was for Canada. No, you can have this in your ski chalet. <laughs> it's yeah. like, what? That's true. The Chalets. Like, all yeah, right. It was getting I mean, weird. Every, it was getting oh, we've weird. all got ski chalets, right? We can play it with the <laughs> Royal Mounted Police, right? <laughs> like what? The Mounties are going to play the Minis. What is going on here? Yeah, it was weird. It was getting weird. Yeah. yeah they again, Nintendo's like their solution to extending any life cycle, make it really small, make it really big. Yeah. <laughs> XL or Mini. <laughs> so you would think like with a year and a half to go, like there was a they lot would we would do thing, to we, change the perception, but we kind of did completely didn't. dead silent. We didn't really. I don't remember doing much of anything until the following E three. E three. Yeah, I remember. That's the thing. It was like, it was so. Again, now that I'm looking back, it's like this is such a weird blip because yeah. Nintendo is so not the type of company that shows tech demos, that shows hardware for the sake of, 
you know, just announcing it for some reason. Right. And then waiting this long before an actual first party game is released yeah. on it. So yeah, we 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 didn't do much. We were still doing Nintendo or I'm sorry, we We and DS. Yeah. So, yeah, so we basically for the rest just of that year. pushed that. I mean, you know, the 3DS was launching, mm-hmm. so we had to focus on that. That's right. We launched so we, the 3DS in March. Yeah, we had right? another yeah. system that needed support and it was frankly struggling. That struggled hardcore um, too. So the, the the concern was growing <laughs> overall <laughs> in the company, but it was like, yeah, focus on the products that are out. We got a long time to go with this. You know, when the time's ready, we'll be able to change people's minds. Yeah. I think um, we waited too long in retrospect. Yeah. Way that, too long. that was another one of the mistakes. So then people forgot about anything that they learned <laughs> right. that clarified it and was back to confusion. Yeah. So we got back to yeah. E3 2012, and yes. unfortunately, things did not get better. No, that actually got made, made it worse, honestly. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> this time we had, we had some games. They were not great, though. Um, there was the infamous Nintendo Land fireworks conclusion. Okay, we have to talk about that because that, that was probably like an all time, I'm not going to say an expletive, but I really want to. In, oh, blank, blank, blank moment. In our, in our video, top 10 Nintendo E3 moments. This made the list. It was a, when I, <clears throat> when I was in that room, so we were both we were both in the room. Oh my gosh! Um, you, were, you you were doing social media stuff. I was, was doing that? social media right. stuff. There was we were under. I remember, okay, let's let's set the scene here. So we were underneath what was is now the Microsoft right. Theater. Before it was the Nokia Theater. So I'm gonna yes. call it the Nokia Correct. Theater. Correct. We always did the press we conference. We did the there. Ca- press conference there. It was hilarious, and they changed the name to Microsoft Theater. We had to get out ah, of there. Ha, ha, ha. Had to get out. <laughs> Can't of there. do that anymore. Anyways, <laughs> tangent. So we're in the Nokia Theater. Right. The underground of the Nokia Theater is all like green rooms, yeah. and there's this big meeting space, and that was sort of where everybody was gathered. Yeah. So it was a huge room, l- little individual tables, kind of like a little ball, like a like a wedding, but yeah. like yeah. really not a wedding. Um. <laughs> And you would be mixed in there with pretty much everybody from like Mr. Iwata to like your normal day-to-day coworkers. Right. And everybody from the global team as well. So right. like the European team was there. So Every, there's, there's, literally like, there's like 50 there's something people. There's at least yeah. 50 people in there. Right. And we were, you know, usually you, you don't want to stick around in there because it can get a little awkward. So you, you, but you do need to go in there if you have to like talk to somebody. Well, you had important things that you had to do there because you were doing social approved. media. Yeah, I needed to get people I to was, approve I stuff. remember I was working on one of the round tables. That's so right. So I was mm-hmm. in a different, I was not spending most of my time there. Right. I was you at, at the, the convention LACC. center. Yeah. But I remember I, I came back because I needed to talk to somebody or get something. And I walked in at absolutely the worst time possible because oh, yeah. everybody was in that room having the most tense conversation. It was terrible. I had like ever seen. So what had happened yeah. was, and this 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 did happen all the time. It was like they wanted to like change up the presentation. Right. You know, they spend months planning these things. Right. But once you get there and you start rehearsing, it's like, oh, let's move this around or let's, right. let's rewrite the script. But the idea here was we need a new ending for this presentation. Yeah. Do you remember what the original ending was? The original ending was just to end like on a trailer, I believe, okay. of Nintendo Land. Okay. And but the trailer that was cut was a little bit lackluster. Yeah. But it's not it's nobody's fault. It's just what it was. You know, it was sort of showing these little mini games, kind of had a little like the like Mario Party feel, but it didn't feel like a press conference. A big ending. conclusion. It doesn't feel like the Nintendo. Oh, let me leave you with one yeah. more thing, yeah. which is what I think they wanted to get to because it was a big an, a, another big hardware right. year for Nintendo. <clears throat> yeah. So it's like we need to have something, but we don't got it. What can we cobble together? Yeah. It was. It was the night before. Right. It was like 4 p.m. Yeah. So I walked in there. People were like, <laughs> and it was like, what are we going to do? We need to know now. We need to decide now. Yeah. Or otherwise, we're going to be screwed. Yeah, it was uh, bad. And I did the Grandpa Simpson meme where I just turned right around, back you around. You left. I didn't yeah. need to be there. I, I didn't. Sat, I was. I, I don't want to. Even, what do you think? I didn't want that. That happens a lot, yeah. though, because Mr. Wada would yeah. look around he, the room and be like, like maybe what you, do you think? Maybe, maybe you have the, an idea. Maybe you've got the million dollar idea. But that's good, though, that he yeah. used to do that. Like, right. you don't know where the good idea is going to come from anyway. In that moment, no. Nobody I was, had it. I though. was frightened and I wanted to leave. <laughs> Nobody had a good idea. Let me just tell you this right now, because there was no good idea. Yeah. There was no good idea. Uh, but in the end, the great idea was this uh, we co- fireworks. We named fireworks. Yes, and fireworks. it also was actual fireworks. It was fireworks. literally fireworks. Yeah, so what they decided on, but so before the, the original ending was end on the trailer. And I think Reggie was going to be the last person that was on stage yeah. at that in the original ending. But instead, they trotted out poor Mr. Aguchi, who um, was leading up development for Nintendo Land. He also developed Animal Crossing, so he's Well, he was legit. also... So, uh, 
they do have developers who are kind of in charge of the hardware project. Right. He, he was, he he was, was the guy charge. for yeah. Wii U. So, yeah. like, Mr. Koizumi was the guy for, for Switch. Switch. Yeah. Iguchi was the guy for Wii U. Yeah, but he was, like, a, an amazing developer. Right. Like, the sweetest, nicest person. Um, but. But had to take a bullet. Not Also, not the strongest, like, presenter of that group, I would say. That's true. He's, I, he's I would more say of a quiet, mild mannered. Very mi yeah, very guy. sweet, very mild mannered. Right. Um, wasn't expecting to go on stage. Yeah. TBH <laughs> at the eleventh hour. No, this oh, is I'm, I'm, this is literally like four p.m. and the press conference was at nine a.m. Yeah, the next day. Right, so, first thing. The, so you basically have to make the change, recut the videos, and then re rehearse. Rehearse it all night. Per get it perfect. So the poor man was probably up uh, for like until like what ungodly hour, you know, trying to get this right. Um, one of our uh, close coworkers that actually moved to our communications team. Was the translator for that? Yes. <laughs> we should ask him. And well, he's at Nintendo, so an enduring memory him. Uh, for him, I'm sure. I know, I, I, but I remember he like sometimes. I, I think afterwards we did like sort of poke at it a little yeah. bit. Didn't want to like resurface the trauma, right? But he he definitely had like a, that was like uh, what, what's the, is it Snickers? Their commercials are like want to get away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, in that moment, I did. I want to get away, and I just ran. Yeah, I just he turned like, and ran. Had like an out of body experience where he was just like, my my soul left my body yeah. while I was translating for this like at, at this like awkward moment where Man. like you can hear a pin drop in yeah. there. Um, anyways, in that press conference though, like there was there were some highlights. There's like some stuff. they showed off like the third party games that would become the launch, and some yeah. of those were big names. Like, oh, we got yeah, Batman. Assassin's or we got, Creed. Yeah, Mass Effect. Like there were big. Yeah. They were not new. Right. But they were big it's like, names. Finally, these HD games can that, be played on a Nintendo system. That could give blah, you a. Blah, blah. And they were partners that we didn't really have in the Wii. True. So there, if they were again, there were just enough breadcrumbs to be like, yes, this is going to be okay. And it wasn't. Um, <laughs> and I mean, the E3. I mean, the, the same questions lingered. There, there were still people who were confused. We didn't, we didn't really oh, solve yeah. that at all. Yeah. But it wasn't like a total L, I would say, that E3. It was just kind of very, like, passable. It, yeah, I think it was one of those things where everybody, you know, we had already started doing this to ourselves, but everybody on the outside after seeing sort of what, what Nintendo showed at E3 was in that same camp where it's like, well, let's not dismiss it too early. Sure. Let's give the let's give them a chance. Like they showed enough where like it could be okay. Let's give it let's give it enough for it to. Um, yeah. Like no one wants to be like that person that made the snap judgment yeah. and it was like completely wrong. Right. You know. Right. So I think that's what happened. Like everybody was sort of like convinced in the moment. Yeah. Um, so I was like, all right, one step closer to getting this thing out. Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we did it. Uh, we got the info that we needed to get out there. Um, Shortly after that E3, this, this I remember, was a, a big miss. Um, Comic-Con is shortly after E3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually Nintendo uses Comic-Con to show stuff from E3. Or yeah. it's like, oh, you know, we want to emphasize this or that. And what we were told was, we're not showing anything Wii U at, at uh, Comic-Con. Right. And I remember asking, like, why, why? why not? This thing's you launching have, in, like, like four, four months. months. Yeah. And the response was, oh... It's far too soon to be letting the public get their hands on this thing. Yeah. In what world was it too early? I know. What were you thinking? Again, this is like so unlike them because this is something that they totally do the opposite of nowadays. Right. It's like get people, get people's hands on the controller, get them to play the game for themselves ASAP. Like this as was like the galaxy brain moment where let me tell you why it's actually good to not let people play it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember fighting and fighting and fighting, and, yeah. and eventually people. It was like, all right, we'll have a we'll have like a small little thing in the corner behind, you know, right. a curtain for like if we have VIPs, they they can play it. Yeah. But but the public, the, like the ugh, general public, absolutely not. And that I was like, what are we doing? Right. That's when I started to really, really get, get worried. worried. Like, yeah. I'm not sure the decision making is top shelf right now. Did we have it at PAX that year? Do you remember? I think at PAX we did. That was closer. I mean, I mean, that, I mean was like that was September. Two months. Yeah. But. Yeah, Comic Con, it being a question of showing it was yeah, it was definitely bizarre yeah. and wrong. That's definitely true. Yeah. Um, oh, we had man. an event um, around September ish where mm -hmm. we announced like the uh, price, yep. and I remember we spent a big, a lot of time emphasizing this new feature, Nintendo TV. Oh my god! 
uh, we put a lot of effort. The company put a lot of effort and resources really into did. that. They had a whole department for it. So what was Nintendo TV? It was kind of this built-in like app. Yeah. It's kind of like a more interactive Apple TV where, so if you guys have Apple TV, you know, like it, like basically is like a, all your streaming services are in one place. Yeah. And the idea was you can use the, the game pad as a, like a, like a fancy remote and you could like have all your streaming services in one place. They had like some, some of those features that you see on, on, um, Amazon TV now or Amazon Prime TV now or whatever where it's like the x-ray feature yeah where like if you want to know like who is the actress is like the that's in like Game of Thrones or whatever you could like see like a little bio from their IMDB page so they had like little features like that um for Nintendo TV yeah and it would tell you like oh well I want to watch Top Gun but I don't know what service it's on it would just tell you right or if you're watching like live TV you could plan your stuff out with that Nobody cared. Nobody this cared. was a total dud of a feature. They ended up like. And by the way, the top of the line Apple TV now is a hundred bucks. So right. to get that service, right. that that same kind of service, but better. But you know, chasing so like, chasing that like living room hub idea has yeah. always been tough for game consoles. Like Microsoft made the same mistake mm -hmm. with Xbox One. Like they put such an emphasis on like yeah. all the TV and entertainment stuff. Even and, PlayStation with like the whole DVD nonsense. And people, well, well, that worked for them. But people were just <laughs> mad at this. It's like, no, I, I have this to play games. Video games, yeah. Um, so that was another misstep of putting the resources in the wrong yeah. thing. It was really interesting because, this again, this, there's a lot of firsts and a lot of question marks around, mm -hmm. like, some of the, the launch stuff that we were pushing. It's like, nowadays, mm -hmm. again, Nintendo is all about, like, this is a Switch, you use it to play Switch games. This is what you're do with, doing with that. Like, that's it. You're going to yeah. get to play these games as soon as possible. Like, this is what we're using the system for. But this one was, like, games were almost, like, the last thing we talked about. So it was, like, yeah. Nintendo TV well, was, like... there were many like, of them. That, maybe that's, prob <laughs> the that's probably why. Um, it was, like, Nintendo TV was the first thing. And then the second thing was, like, oh, use it for, like, Miiverse and for yeah. the new and the weather like as your like little yeah it was definitely just a bullet point in the in the laundry list yeah of and then it's do. like the last thing on the list is like oh and you can play some games <clears throat> yeah it's like what you're a gaming company right so that that was weird you know and I, yeah i remember when we would when we did that september event we rented out this big space <laughs> in new york city and we had like these presentations and reggie was like on stage like he had an extensive Talking about Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, <laughs> yes. With the, the, the whole Nintendo yeah. TV thing. It was like over 50% of that presentation. It was a huge presentation. was about that. like that right. and not about games. I remember he also had the head of Activision to talk about that Call of Duty and as well. And that guy, whoa. Well, what, what, what do you want to say about it? I don't want to. I'm scared of him. <laughs> I actually played that version of Call of Duty. That was a pretty good version, I thought. I was probably the only person to play it. Yeah. Um, but he, yeah, he had some interesting He was very intense. Very intense. He was in, very intense. Very intense. Very intense. Yes. Very intense. Um, so we got past that. Now we have all the details. Like, when's this thing coming out? How much yeah. is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. There was the two versions. They had no storage. Oh, God. Um, the two versions. I remember we were planning on the PR team. It was like, all right. We're we close. We're on tour. We got, well... Well, oh. Okay, why don't you tell that first? Yeah, we got to take this thing on tour. Right, right after we announced all that stuff in that September event in, in New York, um, where producer Stephanie didn't bring any proper fit attire <laughs> in, like, freezing New York weather, by the way, calling her out right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, we were like, let's take this thing on tour. So we yeah. went on, like, this crazy, I didn't like, go on this tour. This is actually a really fun tour. Oh. I have a lot of fond memories from this tour. This is one of those things where it's like, that time was like real weird, but like we had a lot of fun. Um, so we took the Wii U on like this like crazy, like I think it was like an eight city across the country tour. We had these kind of a small team. It was like myself, producer Steffi was on that team. Mysterious trainer Mike was there as well. Um, so it was like sort of like across departments. We had people kind of helping out with this thing because it was sort of a big, a big, endeavor and we would just take the wii u and our events team would like build these really nice demo spaces for us to show the system to media that were that were in that in that city um i think at that point we did have some like invited um just general public to come play as well so it was like this big event and i i mean 
I personally had a lot of fun because it was just like hanging out in different cities with all your friends and like it was great. But while we were demoing this, those like very shaky launch titles, it was like, this is going to be bad. When you have to sing Call Me Maybe like 35 times because the only game coming out is Sing Party, yeah. you know you have a problem on your hands. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then this is where I had like the traumatic Nintendo Land memories because I was like, oh, I yeah. really can't, like, I cannot ham it up anymore. Can't do this anymore. I can't. This is not fun. <laughs> this I like, but you have to like convince yourself like this yeah. is fun. I have to make it look fun. Yeah. You know. And it was it was a weird time. You know, because on the one hand, it was like doing this actual like event was really fun, right. and it like bonded all this whole group of us together. We had like so much fun together, um, but showing the actual games and showing like this actual system was like kind of a real bummer. Right. Um, so it was, it was a weird duality, I think there. I re you've told me some of the stories from that tour. We should save that tour as a separate story time because that, that sounded like we a should have, um, wild time. <laughs> we oh, producer have, Stephanie for that. We should have producer Stephanie and Mysterious Trainer ah. Mike on for that. Actually, that would be... I'll sit that one out. Okay. We can put a mustache <laughs> on him and he can still come <laughs> on the show. <laughs> That's funny. We had some good times though. That was that was real. That was one of my fondest memories. Um, so back at HQ, while you were off uh, gallivanting, gallivanting around and singing, uh, uh, "Call Me Maybe," I was back grinding out who and who wouldn't playing God. Who wouldn't would not get a Wii That's U. That's right. You were making a list for the press, and checking list. it twice. And I prepared a great list that had you know <laughs> what I thought was the right Top amount tier of people. people. Yep. Um, it would. It did not feel. Like a huge inflation from what we would normally. Right. We had a very strong list. I remember I submitted it. Oh yeah. It was immediately rejected. It was, <laughs> the response was, "Are you out of your mind? We are going to need every last system at retail, right? Because this thing's going to sell out immediately. So you need to slash this list by like ninety percent." Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, that was pretty crazy. How yeah. the, the the weird hubris confidence again, very unlike. And we weren't again, we weren't talking about like thousands of systems. It was like two hundred and fifty. We're talking about like yeah, it, it was, was literally like, two hundred. This is like a drop in the bucket. Yeah, but um, why though? I don't know. It's like these media are going to write about this. This is a big a new console. They're going to do stuff. Yeah, with it. And, at least some stuff. <laughs> and, and honestly, we need the help. So again, I, the decision making was a little it was out a little of whack. unhinged. Yeah, um, a little unhinged. But. I cut it down by 90%. We just did what they told us to yeah. do, guys. If you're on that list, you were very lucky. And also, sorry if you were cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kid's fault. <laughs> this is like your your version of the Nintendo apology uh, story. You need to get on this. It wasn't my fault. Yes, it was. <laughs> People were pulling my strings. Nobody was pulling your strings. But your own... That's true. Disdain for Woodhawker. I love Woodhawker. <laughs> you do now. You didn't then. I know, I do. Um, do you remember the launch ad campaign? I watched this commercial last night oh to get in gosh. the mood. The tagline, how you will play next with the U, just the U. Um, this was eh. one, one of the worst ad campaigns eh. uh, Nintendo ever had. It was kind of like, what was that show? Like Hollywood Squares, where it was just like everybody yeah, was, in, it was like zooming right. around, people who were in these little boxes doing different stuff. They were in their living rooms doing It was going things. so fast, you couldn't see anything of what people were doing. It was like bam, 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 with this terrible like dubstep music playing. Everything was dubstep. Everything was dubstep in at 2012. That time. Everything was dubstep. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much. This stuff. was the this was the big launch campaign that they spent millions of dollars on. Um, did us no no help at all. I remember the advertising team was like, "This is our huge campaign. We want to do a media exclusive because this is a, oh yeah because this is hot." And I was like, "Why? I don't think the media wants to cover advertising." <laughs> That's right. I remember that they were yeah. like, "We want you to like we want to do like this YouTube right. drop. <clears throat> like it was going to be this big but, deal." Uh, yeah. Once again, I was bullied. Uh, seems to be a trend. Uh, into Maybe you're doing just giving it. up too easily. <laughs> I can't. I'm getting it from every direction. You're getting it from some, you. Getting it from them. You're learning something about yourself. Getting it from the person who I'm sending this list to. Jeez, not the best time for me. Oh no. Um, we had a big launch event where, yeah. the strangely, the big idea for this was like a dozen people in these me homemade heads. me heads, like it's me, not me homemade. Mascot. It wasn't home. It wasn't well, like we paper mache. They them. didn't look super well, the great me, either. The me's have, are pretty basic in the features. Sure. But okay, these me heads were literally like the most 
terrifying things. They were pretty creepy. I have ever, and I have, I'm kind of have a fear of like dolls coming to life, oh. like puppets, like that kind of nonsense. Uh -huh. And I, I, we, we, I will put the video here. I, I was a host for this for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I again bullied into. I think was, you didn't get bullied. I think it was you Hollywood, volunteered. Hollywood sign. It was a Hollywood sign. I gotta get my name out there. Production. I gotta make my star my my star sign. Ah, my star, star shine. shine. Oh no, <laughs> the Wii U just melted my brain for a second. <laughs> but you're healing. You're healing slowly, regenerating. Um, yeah. So we were in New York with these me heads. We call them me heads. But why was that all of a sudden? Now we're talking about me's. There was no common theme to any of these Why things. Why was it just not like, let's talk about the hardware. I don't know. Like, it's like, it's one of those things where, again, it was like a galaxy brain moment. It's like, we need a, we need a spectacle. Yeah, we need to, yeah. we need to cause a, a scene for this launch. So we're going to creep people out with this like army of bobblehead people around the city. And it was weird. So weird. Yeah, the knee heads were terrifying. But Reggie had one. They made one for him. That one looked cool. And then he had a like a disembodied head, like in his office <laughs> yeah, for like the rest of office. time. <laughs> it was just like on top of like a shelf. Who <laughs> liked it? I mean, it was very he his me is like very good. Yeah. Um, and it was really cute. But like just having the head though was like weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, and they made him like a little mannequin yeah, body where right, they could put the right. head on top. So uh, we're not batting a thousand at this point. Um, no. But the thing comes out. The thing comes out. And I remember there was a big meeting. Uh, oh, oh, there was one other thing I should say, before going back to my list. Around the same time, it was like, okay, you're getting ready to send these out. Here's something that you should know and that we should all plan oh, for. Oh, yes. This was bad. If people get this. Uh, there is a significant day one a update day one patch. for the hardware uh, that, depending on your internet speed, may take over an hour. <laughs> so PR team, please, uh, like, fix, figure that please out. fix that. And then everyone had a panic. It's like, oh no, but Christmas morning when you unpack the system and right. you have to do a one hour update. What are we going to do? Jimmy and Johnny. What about, what about Jimmy and Johnny? <laughs> what are we going to do? That was like literally like 14 meetings about that. And I was like, Great. please. And people. you know, we had seen, it was like, yeah, this thing is a little undercooked. Yeah. And honestly, that update did nothing to change that. Does it crash like crazy? Um, I mean, you would think this the system that we announced two years before might be ready, but it, I mean, it seemed completely clearly this rushed. hardware was not ready, and there was also no game. Rushed so what out the, the heck? door. Yeah. So that was just again another bullet on the list of things working against us. Yeah. Uh oh. The right. uh oh bullets. Right. Um, but anyway, the thing comes out. I remember I was there was a meeting like the Monday after, and it was like okay, um, the launch was actually not bad. Like yeah, that's the, true. the numbers were were Pretty solid. Okay. Yeah, um, it wasn't like the best launch ever for hardware, but it was kind of like within our range of expectations. Mm -hmm. It was not an immediate catastrophe. So again, there was a a small glimmer, like a glimmer of hope. Yeah. Um, in that time, right short at, shortly after the launch, I had my again my one most disappointing experience with a Nintendo product. Right. Which I will tell you again. <clears throat> <laughs> I will tell, this story, I tell many, this story as many times as I need to. It was before Thanksgiving. All of my friends, we were together. It was like, oh, Kit's You're working together at, alone. Kit's got the new uh, Nintendo system. Wow, Kit works at Nintendo. So cool. Let's check it out. And we get all hooked up. We're gonna play Nintendo Land. It's oh, like, boy. oh, this is gonna be just like just like Mr. Awada said. We're gonna be we're gonna be. It's gonna be fun. More, more together than ever. Um, get it all hooked up. Get ready with Nintendo Land. We're in the menu thing crashes catastrophically. It's like, oh, mm, well, that was just an unusual, unfortunate thing. Let's let's try it again. We get to the same spot. Get ready to push the button and play. It crashes. At this point, some of the air is going out of the room. We give it one last try. I'm just praying to the heavens work. Nope. Crashes again. And at that point, everybody's like, we're not playing this Let's anymore. do something else. Oh, the, the crushing. Just disappointment. Yeah. And that's just again like so, so unlike. unlike Nintendo. Right. They're so strict about quality, about yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. They delay games without you know, without blinking an eye right. to make it make sure it works, make sure there's no bugs. Yeah. But for some reason with this hardware, it just like it literally did not work. Yeah. 
And I know what that problem was. That problem got fixed in a patch like a week later. But again, yeah. leading up to Thanksgiving, what, you know, with a new system, a lot of people are going to be- Jimmy and Johnny, though. Jimmy and Johnny are going to be having that same experience, having that same crash. They're going to be embarrassed. And being like, this thing's junk. After they waited an Get hour me, for the up the patch. Where's my Xbox? I, I want a 360 no-scope, somebody. Exactly. Um, it's weird because when we were playing Nintendo Land now, 10 years later, your system crashed <laughs> twice. Uh, Do you think it's your system? But do you think it's you? No, because that was a known issue. And it's also 10 years later, so... It crashed again. It's probably past the warranty here. It crashed a lot. Where's your Wii U? It's in a dumpster. That's where it belongs. <laughs> Don't get me started on this. Um, so, oh, no. back to the launch. The first weekend was fine. You know, some of the panic mm -hmm. subsided. But it quickly returned. Because as it, we got deeper... Like dropped. In, ...into the holiday season, it started to drop like a stone. And again, the holidays, like this should be your biggest. It is. The, the curve should be getting bigger as you get closer. Right. And we didn't have stock problems. It wasn't that. It was people just didn't want this thing. Sure wish we could given it to the other 200 people that yeah. media that maybe needed those, it maybe to Maybe those media the, could, say something, could yeah. say something nice about it. Um, so there was a lot of panic going into the Christmas break. And around that time, I started to hear like, hey, there's going to be a Nintendo Direct in January, pretty soon when everybody gets back. And we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna need to do a little work on it over the break. Um, and I was kind of the guy doing Nintendo Direct at that point yeah. in Nintendo of America. So I was like, all right. And I would get some of the planning documents mm -hmm. and I got and one that had a script. Or it wasn't even a script, it was just like a, a bullet, like a bullet <clears throat> um, list of games. And I looked at the games and I said, wow, this is a pretty great list of games. Is this like the lineup for 2013? And the person I was working with said, no, this is pretty much everything we have in development right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is like a real panic moment. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, blank, blank, blank. And blank, blank, blank. if you go back and watch that direct, like, you can kind of see the panic. I think there was a lot of, like, this thing's a little shaky now, but just wait. This smash is coming. Just wait. Yeah. And, like... There were games that were announced that didn't come out for, for like years until like the end. The end the of the, end life, of the cycle. life cycle, yeah. Years and Star Fox. I mean, yeah. Even Mr. Alnuma kind of hinted at what Breath of the Wild would be. I know. He's like, we're rethinking the conventions of Zelda. Yeah, in, you in can our watch new game. that direct. It's crazy. And um, they Never announced, again. you know, Wind Waker remake. I think they had uh -huh. Bayonetta two Bayonetta in there. Two. It was just like throw the kitchen sink at this thing. Yeah, Whatever everything got. we got, everything we got, right. put it there. And Mr. Iwata was promising all these updates, like we're gonna make it speedier, it's gonna be snappier, and the end it never got speedier. That that was my that's my biggest issue with yeah. that is just like little... the OS, the the menus, the front end of that thing is yeah. so slow. Yeah, um, it was unfortunate. Yeah. It had like some charm with like the whole, you know, like the Wii the Wii menu was cute, but um, but yeah, it just it would chug and it would it's loud too. Like that fan would get going oh, and it's just like, it was like whirring away. It's like a helicopter in your living room. It's such a weird thing. It's it crunch, just didn't. Crunching those numbers in there. It didn't work. Yeah. So that's kind of, that kind of takes us past the launch. Yeah. That was the last sort of big thing that happened in that launch timing. Yeah. That really just was like a, you know, various red flags have been raised at this point. Right. Like, uh oh. This right. is not going well at all. Um, yeah, and then that that started sort of the the Wii Wii U era at Nintendo. And again, I think the Wii U era was interesting in that it forced Nintendo to do some like new and, yeah. and innovative things. That, it was backed into a corner that maybe it would never have considered. Um, but it was it was tough times, and it was tough for for, for yeah. many years after right, that. Right. And I don't want people to think like, oh, I hate the, I just hate the Wii U. Like eventually, like the Wii U, the, the Wii U library awesome. was outstanding. Yeah. And it was just a shame that, you know, nobody played them at the time. Most of them have been re-released now yeah. for, for Switch, so that's fine. Except but, for One Wicker HD. Where is that? Yeah. I really would like that for Switch. So I think I think you could say our, our feelings for the system are, are complicated. And very, with good reason. Very complicated. Yes. I mean, again, I had the most fun I ever had in the Wii U era, like doing cool, crazy nonsense things. But then, you know, it was hard to, to see all the negativity and know that you're failing. Um, know that it was your fault. That was my fault. Your fault, it was personally. all my fault. Sorry. <clears throat> and what are you going to do about it? Nothing, apparently. Fireworks. <laughs> 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 Mr. Gucci, where are you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Get on that stage. Um, anyways, yes. It's been interesting to look back because there's been so many things that I think about now. They always say, like, what is it? Um... 
retro what is it retrospective 2020 like hindsight is hindsight 2020, is, is 2020. Yeah. and you do certainly like see so many of those like strange decisions right that were made um when this thing launched that was like very unlike nintendo right so and just imagine also at that same time we're we're dealing with a struggling 3ds too right so the tension was was really mounting yes so we'll leave it on this cliffhanger yeah how did it turn How out? How did it turn out? We don't Stay know. Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> Not in this next episode, but maybe in the future. Uh, yeah, we have lots of stories about this interesting time. Yeah. It was like sort of the 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 middle of our careers too at Nintendo. So yeah. it was a it was just interesting all around. We just to wrap this up on a high note. What what is your favorite Wii U game? Wind Waker. The remake? Yeah. Is your favorite game on the whole system a remake? Yeah. Oh jeez. What is yours? <laughs> Donkey Kong Country? Uh, that's, ve that's very high That's up. my second one. I think Mario Maker is, oh, Mario is mine. Mario Maker. That, okay. that was one of the few mm -hmm. handful of games that used so the game perfectly pad so well. used the gamepad. Yeah. And I mean, I like Mario Maker too. It's nowhere near as good as the original Mario Maker just because that experience so was so intuitive. On Wii U. I mean, that's so a, beautiful. I mean, there are again. Yeah, there were a lot of original games that were very good. So. Wind Waker. <clears throat> Where is Wind Waker? I'm not trying to change For your mind. For Switch. Where? Fine. Fine. <clears throat> Nintendo. Uh, okay. Um, wow, that that was long. I'm gonna play a little switcheroo with our outline here. This episode is also sponsored by Bombas. Wow. We're wearing them. Look at our feet. Foot reveal. We're wearing Bombas. Look at this. Bomba. Gifting is but hard. Bombas makes it easy with socks, underwear, and t-shirts that feel good and do good. They feel good because they're thoughtfully designed with the softest materials, and they do good because for every item you purchase, Bombas donates another to someone in need. So nice. I love that. Um, I have been wearing my Bombas socks nonstop. I also have the Bombas slippers, which is like Those a little- Those are really nice. It's kind of like a, a, a more, it's better than an actual slipper because it goes over your whole foot and right. it's really warm and right. soft and, and you can wash it too. And it's really like, Again, we're talking about stocking stuffers. You can stuff your stocking with a sock. Where's like Exhibit bombas. when you need them? Oh my gosh. With bombas in the stocking. Or maybe your stocking can be a Bombas and you can put more right. Bombas in that stocking. I heard stocking. you like socks, so I put a sock in your sock in your sock, bro. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. It's cool. Yeah. I would not, I am boring, so get me the socks. People like, say like, like oh, nobody wants to get like socks. Or I like it. For 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 a gift? It's a no, perfect that's gift. wrong. Those are wonderful gifts. You're it's gonna so use, soft. You're gonna use them and you are going to love them. Yeah, and they're made from like such good materials like Pima cotton and like, it's not itchy. It's really nice and soft. I've watched these like a million times because I wear them all the time mm -hmm. and they've like held up really well in yes. the wash and stuff. Yes. So. Yes, socks. Excellent for winter. They feel nice and mm -hmm. warm and toasty. I yes. love it. Yes. Yes. Give the good this holiday season with Bombas. Go to bombas.com slash Kit and Krista and use code Kit and Krista for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Kit and Krista. Code Kit and Krista for 20% off. Bombas.com slash Kit and Krista. Code Kit and Krista. Kit and Krista. Right here. Got it. And in the description below. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on to what we are playing. Oh boy. Be the big, finally, we've been playing God of War. God of War! I'm so excited. Also, you went on a little getaway. You, did, you have not been playing very much God of War. I've been playing some God of War. Okay. Um, yes, I was away this weekend, but I am so excited to go back to God of War this week. But I, I, got, a, I got a good chunk, chunkity chunk of God of War in before I left. Okay. I started on Thursday. Good. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness, this game. I... I knew I was Elaborate. going to be excited about God of War, and I loved, obviously, the one before this. Um, but just, like, the immediate... It's just, like, as soon as you boot up this game and you're, like, in back in this world again with these characters, it's like, oh, my gosh, I've missed you so much, and I'm so glad to be back. This is so freaking awesome. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Kratos! And it's so awesome! I was like, this is... This is the best. This is such a good game. It's beautiful. It, it looks it really incredible. Is, yeah. um, I, I really like the way that they have a little recap from the that previous is nice. game as well. Because yeah. I'm like, what, what, what all? I, I kind of yeah. know the basics, obviously, but it's like I, I want to get caught up on what's going on, um, and they do it in a really nice way. And then you just like you sort of jump into it, and it's like it feels like so much happens like within those first, you know. 
two, three hours yeah. where like a lot of games can have sort of a slow build up where you're doing a lot of tutorial stuff or relearning things, whatever. But like they do such a good job of like pacing you through, yeah. like reminding you how to play this game and, and, and teaching you the new things that you're doing, but also like giving you so much of that like cinematic, you know, stuff that you love from God of War games um, and relearning all the characters that you've met before. Like it's so well done that you're just like completely like in it. Um, within those first few hours and I just like I was like this is amazing how do you do this it's crazy <laughs> how'd you do it Corey you tell me <laughs> it's so good I'm a little further than you actually I know um, not for long. I, d I remember we were talking about the previews not long ago and I was like some of these seem a little lukewarm yeah and I, I, won I wonder what area of the game they were they allowed played? to talk about yeah because I will say like the first like hour is a little slow it's a little bit like, it's a world that you are familiar with. Right. It's not a new place in right. the first hour. Right. Maybe so, that's why. So in that hour, I did wonder, like, gosh, well, you know, what are they going to do to make this different? But, you know, there have been enough things that have happened that are, that are pretty different. So mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil you. So don't I'm, spoil So I'm going to sort of dance. Now you get worried about spoilers? Now you're the one getting spoiled? Don't you dare. It's not nice. No, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not. For our for our beautiful listeners, oh not for gosh. not for you. I'll spoil you later. We should do um, a spoiler cast on this game. There are some uh, new. There's a lot of new characters um, in it. I'll say I'll say this. In addition to um, Kratos and Atreus, there you sometimes get another character following you around. So it it does feel like more than just in the first game. It was like. Kratos and Atreus, that's the pair, and they're yeah. doing it on their own. There, there feels like there's more of a group, yeah. more of a party, even though not everybody is always, like, out adventuring with right, you. Right, 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 yeah. Um, I, I also agree that they, it does feel like there's more, like, characters that you're going to be, like, deeply um, getting to know right. that I really like as yeah. well. Yeah, and um, this, this new character that I have who's following me around, I'm sort of wondering what his ultimate future or role is going to be. What is your role in this? It's, <laughs> you have a real expectation for what he is going to be when you find him, and it's absolutely not that. Oh, but that's you, really interesting. But you wonder, is it always going to be that way? Okay. It's a very, look, at, it's, walk, look at me dance around. It's like, <laughs> I feel like around. you and I are in like a Smash meeting talking about like a character <laughs> reveal right now. You're me, and I'm the, the team that was yeah. like, huh? <laughs> um, I think I know what the character you're referring to because I've already been introduced in the story to this character and I'm on my journey to get to this character mm. right now um, in a very cool area. The, the other thing I like, and I won't spoil this for people, but it's like the first area is very much like kind of like something you're familiar with. And then you're like, where, where in the realm am I going to be journeying to? Because yeah. that's what you did in the first mm. game. Right. Um, it's like, I don't know what to expect. Is it always going to be this landscape? you know, of like the snow and all that stuff, or is it gonna be something else? And I was like really pleasantly happy to see something else. And it was like, oh, this is like a, just a, a totally different, you know, environment that I'm in that I can explore a different way. And it's like, it looks really beautiful. It's yeah. really cool. Um, you're meeting these new characters and stuff. So so I really like that there is, there is that variety um, in the game so far. I also really like that Atreus is older, okay? I'm not... But you said you didn't like Atreus. I don't like Atreus. Still? Especially, he, I mean, he's a little better now. But the first game, I'm like, I'm not about to be babysitting this little brat. Like, this is annoying. Like, go away. Well, I will say, like, they probably did the best job of, of not making it feel like you had to, in, in fights, like, always be... Atreus is basically invincible. Like, you yeah. don't have to worry, like, oh, no, help But me. still, like, he's... He's, he's pretty helpful. I mean, well, he's my, he's just like an arrow to me. Yeah, yeah. He's like an arrow. I just use him for his arrows, that's it. Right. I think you use him more in this game now. You'll see that soon. Yeah. Um, there's more that he can do. Yeah, he has some special skills he that seems, he gets. Yeah, he's pretty useful. Yeah, I like that it's more, like, he's more useful in the actual gameplay. I'm just, like, not super into, like, this kid following me around, you know? Yeah, he's very, like teenagery now it's little, better little little angsty uh, it's better it's more interesting and uh, the little the little the little like eight-year-old or whatever you, you can was. relate to that more being an irritant yeah <laughs> I'm like, I'm really like running away yeah. from home yeah um um yeah I, exactly i'm i'm not a i'm not a huge atreus fan but this one is definitely better than the first mm -hmm. game did you do any of the side stuff in the first game a little bit <clears throat> yeah i naturally sort of do them yeah. I, I i unlocked a few already for this for this game 
um, going to the second area. I, I know that that side quest actually someone said it was actually really good. So thinking about doing it. Um, I don't know. There's, there's just so much of the main story though. Yeah. Have you done any of the side quests? <clears throat> well, I was just going to say it's that stuff seems to be more... I don't know if it's more plentiful because I, I honestly didn't do that much of it in the first mm. game, but they seem to be more open about telling you. Yeah, like, you hey. can explore over there if you want. So like I just finished another realm last night and at the end it was like, well, you can go back to the hub or this whole big door opens up and they're like, hey, Atreus, why don't you and I explore this? Yeah. Well, before we go back to the headquarters. Yeah, exactly. It and does say that. I don't, you. yeah, I don't remember them being so like front and center about yeah. that. Oh, for, maybe they're And like, even like pushing you to try it. Yeah. Even in like some of the areas, like you can continue the, the story by going here or let's explore this. Right. And then like when you choose like to continue the story, it's like, Let's not forget to come back here and explore this area <laughs> right. when we're done with this. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's very much like, do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I heard they're really good. So Yeah, I've seen a lot of people saying yeah. the side stuff is uh, really, really good. So yeah. I don't know if I'll do it all, but I definitely want to try, I'll try um, some of them too. Yeah, some of those. Sure. Yeah. 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 The exploration is really well done because it does, it does feel like the world is huge. And each of the little individual places you're going to just seems very like self-contained mm -hmm. and it's its own sort of side quests and and, um, and and places to explore. So it is kind of nice. You can feel like, oh, I can explore this before moving on to the next step or something like that. You said it's your um, Elden Ring skills have been helping you out. With the I'm combat. pretty good at the combat. Like I, I'm playing it on whatever the, I'm not playing on a very difficult level, honestly, but yeah. um, it's not, it's like, it's like not like super easy mode though. Um, and I feel like the, the dodging and the shield bash, which I'm the worst at, but I'm mm. learning to use it more. Um, and then, of course, using Atreus in the right way um, to do the the range stuff, and and like making sure your timing is is right on when you do the finishing blows and stuff like that. Like, I'm pretty good. I was like, oh, I'm, I, like this feels pretty good. Like, I'm not struggling at all, and it feels powerful and cool. And I love being able to switch between the chaos um, blades and also the axe. Do you use those pretty equally? I kind of do, actually. Oh, wow. Do you use the axe? I use the axe. Yeah. Unless I really have to. Mm. Yeah. I like the Chaos Blades because you can do a lot more, like, AoE damage. The blades felt more... Like, the way they animated them felt a lot more impactful in the original games. Yeah. But because the axe is such a big, like, blunt weapon, yeah. they probably have to make the blades feel different. I guess a so. Yeah. 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 But it's good for like if you have people s surrounding you, like a lot of little enemies, yeah. like you can just get rid of them all with the blades. Yeah. Just yeah. do the the. Cr I like the the move that he does oh, yeah. where you're like he spins it you around. spins it around and yeah. it just lights everything on fire. Right. 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 It's cool that it's a, also like a fire and ice mm -hmm. kind of thing because yeah. that really helps with all the puzzles and everything. Right. Like it makes the puzzles feel like oh I know what to do and I know which weapon to use and right. all that stuff. So. Right. Right. They do give you a lot in the combat that I. I, I like I want to try it all, but yeah. I, I often forget about a lot of it. You just button mash like crazy, and then I end up button mashing <laughs> 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 because there's like the rune moves. There's all yeah. the different I stuff. I love the rune moves. You can equip your um, you know, like your socket, your weapon, yep. basically mm -hmm. with, yep. and then there's all the abilities that you can unlock. Yeah. And then there's Atreus abilities, and there's abilities for the axe, there's abilities for the for the yeah. blades. And you do like um, a lot of customization of your weapons and your like armor to yeah. do certain things too. Right. So it all kind of like maps back to like what kind of fighter you want to be, I right. guess. Which right. I was that as deep in the first game. I kind of don't remember that being a. Huge I think there was thing. a. I don't know if there was that much less, but I do remember that being a pretty big focus of getting all the loot too. And like I remember that. Armor yeah. building, crafting. Yeah. 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 He looks cool right now. Oh. Like Kratos. He's in like a cool sort of like, I don't know. I don't like it when he's in the full armor. You want to see his... You I want to see, see his chesticles. Is Kratos hot? Kind of. Oh, really? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's personality. His personality? <laughs> Where he's just know. yelling at you? No, I like he's like very like <laughs> gruff and direct. Like direct. Okay, and he's to very, the point. He's very tough. Action oriented. But you can tell that he has like sort of a heart of gold, you know? Even though he's So you didn't tough. so you do you like this version of Kratos more um 
than the original I do. Kratos, who the was original, kind of who's kind of mean. The original Kratos was was like not a heart of gold. No. <laughs> this one you can tell that he does have like a soft side. Yeah, I did go back and I started watching like a story retrospective on oh, the series. Okay, that's like, kind of interesting. There have been a lot of these games. Yeah, his personality totally and changed. And there were a lot of details that I had forgotten about. And yeah, I actually kind of want to go back and play those original games. Those original games are so good though, the, the but it's so different. The first two are, especially the second one. Second one. Second my one is, is a classic. Yeah. And three started to fall off, and then it's so amazing. Like this was kind of a dead franchise after after three. They did God of War Ascension, That's which right. was don't, better. Don't, don't talk I think about I that one. Finish that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they waited a few years, and they brought it back, and they totally rebuilt it. I, I don't. I don't know if that gets enough credit. The way they oh rebuilt my gosh, this no franchise. kidding. Yeah, and like the way that it's like. Not only did they rebuild the franchise, they rebuilt it in a way where it's like a completely different like mythological yeah. realm that you're in right. and you're exploring that. Yeah, that was just, a great idea. It just makes it so interesting and it feels so fresh, you know? It's like so, it's such a smart move. Um, but yes, I really do, I really do like this version of Kratos a yeah. lot. And I love like, you know, there's like a little bit more personality than just like, I'm gonna kill everything. Like yeah. I'm big buff God of War. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna like destroy yeah. you. So I, I really like that and, and um, and it kind of shows through, like, you know, the even the combat and stuff. It's like he has, like, these different, you know, different things mm -hmm. that he's, he's able to do. So. Yeah. I love it so far. All right. That's our early, early, early impressions yes. of God of War more to come. Yes. Uh, you also played a little of this game from the Indie Showcase. Yeah. A Little to the Left. Got a lovely code for A Little to the Left, which is a game that I was really excited about when I saw it in the Indie Showcase. And we did see it at Summer Game Fest as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I was away this weekend at, in a place with pretty much no <laughs> cell reception or like any sort of like <laughs> reception at all. So it was nice to just have like a relaxing game to play on Switch. Um, and this game is very cool. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that game, Moving Out, that yeah. we both played and liked. Um, it has, it's a little bit, there's no story though in this one. That one has like little snippets of story that you can sort of figure out while you're playing Moving Out. Are you sorry, are you sure it's Moving Out? I think you're thinking of another game. No, I'm unpacking. Was oh, that unpacking. Game? Yeah, moving out is not that. <laughs> moving out is the, is like the overcooked. That's like an overcooked, like no, crazy, I, I meant stressful. unpacking. Yeah. You're right. Unpacking. I'm sorry. Moving out. Un, whatever. <laughs> moving, packing, throwing your. It's a whole genre. The trash. It's a whole genre. That's a genre. Um, but yes, it is like the game unpacking, except without the story part of it. Unpacking had like you can yeah. glimpse the background story, story stuff. Yeah. yeah, this one is more just like. The organization oh. of puzzles, yeah. like organization puzzles of your like, mm -hmm. life, and it's like very satisfying. It's like put these spoons in the order. Uh -huh. Like these books need to be lined up by like color. Um, there's also this little cat paw, like in Mario Maker, that comes oh, to yeah. like destroy your stuff. Oh no, really? Yeah, oh, it's no, really yeah. funny. And the, but the, it's very sweet. It's very like it's a totally perfect like cozy game, like very relaxing. Very satisfying. Some of the puzzles are like legit kind of hard. Uh -huh. um, so there's a hint system that's very helpful. Um, and I think that in the in the indie showcase, they said that the the developers were um, they're like artists, and you can you can really see that everything has like a hand drawn uh -huh. kind of look to it. Even like the hint system, um, how how they give you a hint is they have like this piece of like paper and it looks like pencil scratches all over and you have an eraser and you can erase parts of it to see the hint. So it has a very like art, artist quality to mm. it. So I really like it. It was really, it's really fun. It was perfect for the weekend. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it, is it uh, extremely cozy? It's very cozy. Good. Cozy That's what I wanted to be. know. Yeah. Uh, I picked up uh, last night, so I haven't played it for very long. Uh, Atari Fifty, oh, that's which interesting. Which is this new um, compilation from uh, Digital Eclipse, who did uh, the Cowabunga Collection. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, those folks, they're they're doing some cool stuff with these compilations. So I guess it's the fiftieth anniversary of Atari, if you can believe really? it. Really? Um, but the way they have done oh, that's this a long time. is so cool. Um, normally, with these like retro compilations, just mm. like, well, here's twenty games, and here's a menu, and you pick them and you play them. They have made this to be like an interactive museum. Oh, wow. Where it kind of takes you along the timeline 
of you choose different eras in Atari's history. Like, so you can choose like the arcade era and it'll, oh, okay. it'll take you like, well, here's what happened. And then like you get to a point and you can choose to like kind of- play a game or whatever. You can go down and get more detail on it or you can just keep going if you want to get like the top level stuff. Okay. And, and the games are there along the way. So you can play them as, as you go through. As you're learning through. about the history. And they've got all sorts of really good like videos and archival stuff. And like, that's where they're like super good at like, the historical bits. Can they do that for Nintendo, please? Well, <laughs> how cool I'm would sure, that be? I'm sure they could, but Nintendo doesn't want them to. Um, Pasha. And I think I've said this before. So, like, my first exposure to games was actually through Atari. Didn't your parents have one? My parents had it. Like, yeah. I, it, that was a little. But you didn't like it. Those games aren't really fun. No. Like they're so dated and so simple in most cases. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying these games out as I go along. Mm -hmm. I'm not really playing them because I was like, yeah, I love playing. You like, know, I don't what adventure. Is, what is like the most <clears throat> popular Atari game? Well, it's interesting because actually the games that I remember liking on Atari were made by Activision, oh. super early Activision, which are which are some people who left Atari right. to create Activision. Okay, uh, those games are not on here. Because this is the Atari collection. Ah. Um, so again, I'm I'm not really playing these because I'm I'm not going to be playing these for the next you know three months. But it's like in this historical conversation. They did, did they? Blah, they did do so much though for like early video games to like set it up. Right. You know. Right. So there is like some significance to that. There's a lot of really interesting stuff there, and I didn't realize this. I thought it would just kind of stop after that early, very retro period of Atari. It mm -hmm. kind of keeps going. And I think the Jaguar, which is from the 90s, is kind of the last group of games. They also have the Lynx, which was their handheld. Oh, yeah, the Lynx. Um, I remember seeing that. So it's quite exhaustive, the amount of history. And, and the history of that company gets really nutty. I mean, it was nutty from day one. Right. But there's been a lot of unexpected twists and turns. Uh, the founder of that company is Nolan Bushnell. I actually went to high school with one of his sons. Oh, that's so random. Um, who was quite the character. So it's just really, I really like that presentation of like a museum yeah. exhibit. That's like, that's a really good idea for some of these like, you know, old, you know, re yeah. like truly retro systems. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you just want the menu of games, like they have that. But like, why um, would you like not want to learn more about this history, you know? And that's yeah, like for, something for that me, a where lot it's of like, people don't do that. I kind of remember what this is all about, but I've got a lot I of I really don't and know a much lot, about it at all. And a lot to learn. Yeah. So just purely from a game history standpoint, it's, it's quite fascinating. Yeah, that's all cool. So, so I'm liking that. All uh, right. On to the news. We have a really beefy news segment. We do. So we um, should get going. We were not late for this news. The TGA nominations happened before we uh, started this recording this podcast. I know. Oh my goodness. And it's, it's time. On our podcast next week, that's going to be our big The Game Awards prediction extravaganza. Yes. That's going to be so right. fun. So we're not going to be sharing any predictions here, but we'll run through some of the highlights of these nominations. So they had the, this is a new category that they added best adaptation. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting and really cool. What is the definition of this? It's basically an adaptation of a game. So like you know okay. how like the Oscars have like best adapted screenplay. Uh, where it's like, well this was a book and I tr I turned it into a movie. So this is it started as a game. So they had like Cyberpunk Edge Runners, oh. uh, like shows, movies, other stuff. Oh, that's Awesome. Right. That's very relevant for today. That's a really smart category. Good idea. Um, but what people care about is the Game of the Year nominees. We have Elden Ring, mm -hmm. God of War Ragnarok, Plague Tale Requiem, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I am so proud of myself that I have played nearly every game on this list except for Plague Tale Requiem. Hmm. I don't way, actually know way to much be a front runner. I don't know much about that game at all, actually. Do you? I was pretty surprised to see that on there. That game. This was the sec. I think this is the second game in the series. I know it was pretty well regarded. I didn't consider it being one of the best games of the year. Yeah. But I all right. Yeah, maybe I should look into this game a bit more. It sounds yeah. scary, though. Is it scary? I think there's a lot of rats involved because it's about. That's right. The plague. I have literally, <laughs> literally heard about this. The plague. And it's very rat. So maybe not for you. Oh, I can't. I can't do it, guys. Yeah, I yeah. can't do it unless there's a rat meter off. No, I doubt it. Okay, then no. Um, but that's, that's a great um, group this of is games. A, a list that's pretty. I think a lot of us were pretty like sure about. There are some that you knew would be there. Five of these games being right. there. Um, yeah. yeah, 
Um, well, I just see Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Yeah, that's list. that's a big uh, achievement. That's um, amazing. I had that on my... I, I, we both tweeted some predictions yeah, before this. Yeah, I got to five games that I was like, I feel pretty good about these. Me too. The and then, sixth game was the one I was like... The sixth one was hmm. tough because I was like, I think Xenoblade based on quality should be here. Yeah. But huge games like that are hard for people to get through and there's right. so many people that they have their committee who nominates these yeah. things. I, was like, I don't think enough people will have experienced this, yeah. but it did. A lot of people put Bayonetta on the list too, but it's yeah. not here obviously. Yeah. So. so they also put out this yeah. list of most nominated games. I like this, this list a God lot. God of War gets 10, Elden Ring 7, Horizon 7, Stray 6, oh. Plague Tale 5, Cod, oh, there's Cod. Cod. Three, Immortality 3, Neon White Neon 3, White. Sifu 3, Tunic 3, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Xenoblade Chronicles, the only Nintendo game to even get on this little list of most nominated. I know. Nominated. Best family game? No. <laughs> no. Because this game is... Why like... was, were Mario and Rabbids on best family game? Aww. I was a little... But, but then in the next category is best strategy game, and it was there. So I felt a oh, little bit better. Oh, good. Okay. Like, don't, I'm glad. Don't, don't, don't write don't it off. Don't best family game that because of Rabbids. I <laughs> know. It's kind of like a cop-out that it's like best family game. That's, like, that's almost like yeah. not winning anything Splatoon at all. Splatoon was there too. Of course. It's a, it's a, oh. it's a, jo- it's a joke category. It's a joke category, category. Yes. yeah. yeah. Um, okay, that's exciting. Uh, I'm not surprised at all by sort of... The top Most, two. Yeah. Horizon having as many as Elden Ring. Go Stray. Um, Let's root for Stray, I have people. some thoughts on Stray that I'll share next week that are mildly controversial. We'll see. Oh, maybe no. I won't say them. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll chicken out. Um, Bullied again. It's great that they made this list because somebody at Nintendo always had to make this and put it into a report. Yes. They can just copy and paste now. The reporting around the Game Awards is it's so... insane. It's breathless and urgent and hot. <laughs> breathless like, and I need urgent this yesterday, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I must send this to everybody immediately. Uh, why I haven't a clue. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm literally crying right now. Uh, we should say we are going to the Game Awards this year. Oh my gosh. We will be there. Um, I'm crying. That's our, so funny. Yes, uh, we, we will be there. I our, bought a dress. Our streak was broken uh, last year. I'm so excited. But it will shall resume. We have a very special collaboration in oh, yeah. December as well. I'm, I cannot wait to tell Keep you guys. Keep it to yourself for a few that. weeks longer. Jeez. <laughs> um, that I'm so excited about that we're going to be in LA in person for and then going to the Game Awards. Oh my God, December. It's going to be so much fun. December's going to be really fun. <clears throat> yes, I love Game Awards season, honestly. Like, I'm a Game Awards fan. I like this, like, you know, this, just like this bookend mm. to the, or like this end to the year and you like yeah. get to look back on... I love getting to look back on all the fun games we played all year and then seeing yeah. them like on the big stage. It's exciting. Now, there was a huge omission in these nominations. Uh-oh. Do you know what it was? No. A huge butt-sized hole. Oh. No Bodhi category. Bodie. Jeff Keighley. I was I was worried that Jeff might, you know, Steal just lift, just lift. Like, thanks for the idea, guys. Lift the butt? Lift the He's Bodhi. He's going Brazilian no, lift the Bodhi from we, our categories? We will be the only, uh, what, what are we? Outlet? Outlet? What, Don't whatever. call us that. What are we then? People? <laughs> people. Even our, do we qualify as people? <laughs> With a Bodhi category. We are the ones. Yes. The official so Bodhi cal- category so is only to be seen here <laughs> on this channel. Our Discord is lit oh with gosh. Bodhi discussion. Um, I was, again, away this weekend, and I came back, and I was looking at Discord messages, yeah. and I opened our game with the uh, uh, TGA's chat thread or thread or whatever, and there were a lot of butt gifts. Not crass at all, though. No. no. Wonderful. Very logical arguments being made. Yeah, very wonderful. And yeah. I was like, I was like laughing so hard. It was so good. It was so funny. <sighs> yeah. I love it. The community is great. We're all we're all excited for go for Godie and for Bodie. Um. So more on that next week. Um. We have also had another round of financials. Oh yes. Uh, Nintendo. Some highlights. Hardware sales were down nineteen percent year over year, but mm. Switch is at one hundred and fourteen million sold. Oh my That's goodness! A lot. That's a huge number. Uh, Splatoon three passed eight million sold. Animal Crossing New Horizons is now the best selling game ever in Japan, Woo-hoo! passing Pokemon Red and Green. That's exciting. And uh, Nintendo and DNA had this joint venture called Nintendo Systems. Uh, this was the objective, quote, to strengthen the digitization. I didn't know that was a word. Me of either. Nintendo's business. Okay. Thoughts on any of that? Um, exciting to see some of these uh, records being broken. Oh. You know, like, it's always fun when a new game becomes the best-selling game. Yeah. 
so it's, it's, it's always fun to watch those lists and, and think about like, did I work on that game? I worked on Animal Crossing. Take some credit. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, it's what you do best. Just, just give me, give me, give me a little, a little throw me a bone <laughs> on this. Come on. Um, let's see what else. The Switch hardware sales being down. Are you worried about this decline? Nineteen percent. Well, they were like, oh, it's they're the still sell, talking it's about. It's like the sell in the supply chain. The, the sell through. We're still I worried about honestly that. Honestly, don't really understand that to this day. I, I heard this a lot in my time at Nintendo. The sell in, the sell through. Sell in the, versus sell through. The, the supply chain. It, it kind of all sounds like. Don't come at me, people. I'm not saying this was just not a good system. I think it's amazing. Like, look at how many units What's your sold. point? My point is that these are all kind of like excuses for it. Just oh, sure. a natural life cycle decline, yeah. which is okay. It's fine. Like we're in what, year six or something? No, we're, yeah. We're going to be in year yeah. six next year. I mean, yeah, no, there, year seven next year. There's definitely some decline happening. The numbers it's are fine. still great, though. Exactly. Let's um, not, but let's call it what it is. Yeah. It's, it's, well, they can't do that. We can. They can. This outlet. The can. shareholder value must be maintained. The shareholder's tapping his foot impatiently right now. You just called this an outlet. I was making fun of Five you. Five minutes after you said we can't this do that. Outlet. This reporter is here to tell you this. <laughs> I'm on the beat, people. Lame. Um, That's what I think. There was one line that both Nintendo and Microsoft said that I thought was interesting. They huh? said. They are now more open than they had been to reevaluating the price of hardware and services in the future. And Microsoft seemed pretty clear that they might raise some prices after the holidays. Raise? Raise. For what? Well, people seem, there have been some people saying the Series S and Game Pass, I think Game Pass is the one where it's, <gasps> it's inevitable that they're going to raise the price. Oh, no. This is what we see in no, every okay. service. Really the first couple years, it's like Netflix. Like, how many times has Netflix slowly yeah. raised the price? And then I canceled it. And then you hear like, oh, Disney Plus, like, oh, they're losing money. Like, they're going to start raising the price on that soon. Okay. All these services. They just want to get you into the thing they, until yes. you can't live without it. And yes. then they're going to jack up those prices. Exactly. That seems inevitable. The point Shake about your fist at the big corporation. Raising the hardware prices, especially That's for Nintendo, weird. you cannot do that. Cannot. That's cannot. weird. And in year seven, year seven of the hardware, like, are you joking? The, the potential acceptance of this, I don't, could you get away with this in like Japan and raise the price? I don't know. Oh my gosh. That's just dirty though. But like, think, like games here, the price of games versus the price of games in Japan is like so different. I know. It's like 20, at least 25% more in Japan. It is, yeah. I don't know enough about that market. and the, is, it, the, is it just gonna, physical? The thing? price elasticity. There's a big economics term. If about, you raise yeah. the price, will the demand totally drop, or will it just stay the same? I didn't know, I know. you were like Mr. Wall Street. You what cannot the heck do. Is happening you right cannot now? do that in America, though. They won't stand no. for it. No riots in the streets. If you raise the price of this, if this Xbox and my Switch, I Wait will not second. stand for it. Are digital games the same price in Japan? As what? As America? No, the games are more expensive. They're just period. Yeah. Mr. Sakurai did a video on this. You should watch it. I should watch this video. Okay, I didn't watch it. You've literally not, been in the woods, so. Not been caught up with Mr. Sakurai's many <laughs> uploads. Get caught up. Get, smash that notification bell. Yeah. Um, oh, that doesn't You can't raise the good. price again no. on, on a six year old system. That's the thing. The hardware, no. no. I mean, the they've, they've Services, done. Services, maybe. They've yeah. done really well to maintain the price as it is. They have yeah. not done like price cuts. Yeah. They've added a more expensive system with the sure, OLED. The They've OLED, added a, yeah. a lower with the, the light. The light. Um, Microsoft. Mm. I mean, Sony did this in Europe. I mean, maybe you can get away with this in Europe. I don't know. It, I feel bad if that's the case. No, don't do it. Again, their, their economy's shaky. <laughs> people should not put up with this, though. And the economy is shaky. It's Microsoft. They've got billions and bajillions, trillions, whatever, of well, dollars. Nintendo, too. They got so much money in that bank. Throw that in their face. They don't need more no. money. They have piles of gold with Wario swimming around in it. They don't need it. Terrible. Anyways. Um, briefly. we got to cover this briefly. Oh my gosh! The the because these this Twitter, picture is this, ridiculous. This Twitter news just keeps coming. So, <laughs> as a shock to nobody, the new Twitter verification rolled out. It's since been rolled back. Who knows? By the what time this is comes happening out, with the rolling is confusing. There was like um, two different checks. Somebody, and then some po other somebody, stuff. So, Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. I did not. Did you realize that is also Nintendo of US? <gasps> I somebody pointed that out. 
and I thought it was genius. That's really um, funny. It's but it's they spoofed, spelled, they, they spoofed, spoofed the it. Nintendo account. They posted a picture of Mario flipping the bird. Um, this happened. <laughs> like there are some companies where like the stock price tanked because <laughs> people were saying stuff. That's not funny. That's bad. Like again, it's it's funny until it makes like a real. Thing I think happen. we all saw this coming. Yeah, but I guess you gotta learn the hard way. Oh my god. Um, I so, just, so okay, we talked about yeah. l- last time. We talked about how maybe as a defensive measure, Nintendo might slow Pull down the some advertising. ads. Yeah. Now we're on the offensive because you mess with Mario. I know. Now we might start yanking stuff the rug out yeah. from under you, Twitter. Yeah, I I would not be surprised if that happens because the IP is so very. Now very you've precious. gone too far. You've gone too far. You have no. Con- you've lost control. Yeah. Again, they love control. You have lost control over this whole operation, and it's just like. Really detrimental. I think how many like this this particular image got like millions yeah. of shares and, and it was crazy. It was crazy. It like took off. Yeah. And there was there was like some thread that somebody found of like somebody like tagged Elon Musk in this and he was doing like the laughing face emoji. Yeah. Like if somebody at Nintendo saw that, oh the head of this company that I'm paying millions of dollars is not taking this seriously, I'm out. And there's so many instances of him of Elon Musk doing that to other people that have complained right. about real issues that have happened with with the whole Twitter nonsense. Right. And he has just been trolly as right. he does. And it's like Dude, do you not see like the long-term impact of? I have seen a lot of people counting the number of times he has used the laughing face emoji, and then saying, Mm. "People who use this emoji have never been more mad in their entire life." Which I I sort of tend to believe the way he's been using it. That's what it is. Yeah, it's like a it's like a cry for help. (laughs) It's an internal cry for help. Yeah. Ah! Um, So it could be laughing and crying at the same time. So that that is. I don't know. The deep. I don't know what's going on over there. It is ridiculous to Poor see Mario. Um, we're all the victims. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think people would be legit mad at this. They like, are. Like, live Not it. there would be. They are. Live legit. it. Live it. You think that the reports are coming in hot and heavy on TGAs? Oh, it's yeah. the Twitter reports though. Yeah. You said something that I thought was like very true. Oh. And also like, I felt, I felt good for you in that moment. <laughs> and you're like, I really feel for people at big brands managing Twitter accounts right now. And like, I could just, I don't want to imagine it, but I like could imagine your life if you were still at Nintendo and this was happening at Twitter, like what your life would be like right now. It would be a nightmare. Yeah. You would not be in a good place. No. So I'm glad that you're not in that place. Because you're asked to fix a problem that you didn't create and that honestly you can't fix. Right. Because I don't run Twitter. I don't own the platform. Elon Musk. You need to go back to Meverse. That's the only way. (laughs) There's some problems there though. We made the platform. We can control it. This would never happen there. You have to moderate a lot of stuff. (laughs) And then this is what always would happen. Something would happen and then people would come out of the woodwork. Did you see this? Have you seen this? Have you seen what are you doing? Is it is is something being done about this? What is happening? And so many people that are unrelated to the issue. But you have to respond to every single one. Thanks for passing this along. We're in the know. We're working on it. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just so happy for you. You're not there. I know. You're here. But I know the people who are there, and I feel bad for them because they—they're the ones who have to deal with this. Yeah, thing. I do too. I do feel bad for them. Right. But I, I'm also—I'm really glad that it's not you. I'm really glad. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say, I'm really oh. glad. Glad for me too. Yes. All right. Uh, That's the newsy news. Who knows what nonsense there will be next week. We're looking forward to that. Oh, gosh. On our questions from our Patreon community. Every question comes from Patreon. And if you are a subscriber, you can get a bonus Mm Q&A with about a dozen more questions every week. And those are the juicy ones, too. Those are the juicy questions. And we've heard from a lot of our wonderful Patreon subscribers that some some of their favorite times of the week is listening to the bonus Q&A. Yes. Um, So, yeah. Join us. Check it out. Okay, first question is from Frulia. In a previous video, you mentioned how the cafeteria at your office was called Cafe Mario. Were other facilities or meeting rooms also Nintendo themed? If not, what kind of names would you have given them? Yeah, good question. Um, all of the meeting rooms, all of the conference rooms were Nintendo themed. Yes. So in the Redwood City office, let's go. Yes, there that were enough. There were a small enough number we can go through yeah. them all. Mario Galaxy was our biggest. That was one. the big one. Um, Animal Crossing was mm-hmm. our the one that was right next to where our offices. That were. was in hot demand. That was the one that we used the most yeah. for our meetings. We Sports Wii was Sports. an often forgotten. Meeting we room. have shot Nintendo Minute videos inside That's Wii Sports. The cursed uh, Fortnite was in there. Video was in Wii Sports. Yeah. 
Uh, Nintendogs. Nintendogs. was a small one. That one gets really hot if you're there oh. at nighttime and they turn the air off. Yeah. And you're like trapped in the corner. Um, it was a little rough. Yes. Yeah. Downstairs. Downstairs. What were the rooms there? Splatoon? No. Oh. What was the one down? What was the, the, the one that was closest to the door? And I'm blanking on those. Incopolis. Incopolis. Yeah. I remember the Splatoon thing. Then there, then there was like themed. one more off in the corner. Um, KK Slider was in yeah. the was in the corner. With the, with the one and more in the corner. Nook's Cranny? No. It was not Animal Crossing, was it? It was something more retro, I think. Darn it! But also in the in the Redmond building, uh, it was divided into quadrants. Yes. Can you name the four quadrants? Wario. Yes. Mario. Luigi. It was not Luigi. Oh. Donkey Kong. Oh, Donkey Kong. Yoshi. Yoshi. Green. Right. What? always leave Luigi out. It's so mean. It's too Donkey close. Kong. It's too close to Mario. Donkey Kong was the executive corner. That's right. So that, that was Reggie's important. Reggie's conference room was the was, Cranky Kong conference. No, it was called Donkey Kong. Was it called Donkey Kong? Yeah, it was called Donkey Kong. Yeah, was was there also there a Cranky Kong? Okay. There were so many Kong conference there was rooms. There Kong conference rooms. Like you could go uh, through the uh, list Kong? of conference rooms and they all had some crazy name. Kong. Like there were so many. Conference rooms. Yes. Wow. Um, um, we were in the the executive area too. Like yeah. Our department was there. And then the the really big, lavish top of the building conference room is called uh, Master, Master Sword. Master Sword. Yes. Yeah. Great. We name. had a lot of meetings in Master Sword, but Master Sword had a weird lighting issue where if you sit on one side of the table and you look out the window, you get, get a headache. horrible headaches. Yeah. Don't sit. But on it was that beautiful. Side. It's beautiful. Next though. time you're there, don't sit there. Yeah. Uh, Cerulean Mayhem. Hey, Kit and Krista, with the upcoming Wii U anniversary, I was wondering, during the Wii U days, did either of you actually play your Wii U? How would you rate your usage relative to other consoles at the time with the way Kit trash talks his Wii U that's still hooked up to his TV? I'm yeah, curious. Kit. Also, Kit, it's not weird to hook up your Wii U to your TV. I recently bought the component cables for my Wii and then connected into an HDMI adapter, then connected to my TV. Don't let Krista shame you. I'm shaming you both. <clears throat> Just kidding. I mean, I think you're the one that hates the Wii U, not me. I don't hate the Wii U. Um, I just threw it in a dumpster. I don't play it now. You don't have it. I don't have it. <laughs> you I don't can't. play it. Um, but during the time of Wii U, I absolutely played my Wii U. Yeah. Again, I, th I think people got the wrong idea. Of, again, our, our feelings about the Wii U are very complicated. They're very complicated. But regarding the software library. There were some really great games. As usual, top shelf for yeah. a Nintendo system. I yes. played my Wii U a ton because... Especially like later in the life cycle because yeah. all the games came out for right. it. Right. Yeah, I played it the same amount I played any other Nintendo system, yeah. which is to say a lot. Right. And loved the games. I just did not love the experience of like navigating menus and no. turning the thing on and waiting 90 seconds. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But once you got past all of that, yes. the games are still really fun. Yes. Kai X is next. Hey, Kit and Krista. Do no, I you said it wrong. Hey, Crit and Kista. Oh, I missed that. Well, that's different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do either of you remember these parody Pokemon cards that showed up in Cracked oh Magazine God. back in the late 90s or early 2000s? I have a vivid memory of calling my dad before he left work and asking him to pick up the issue, and we bonded over it because he grew up loving Mad Magazine. What memories do you have with this or other Nintendo parodies? And what did Nintendo think of these slightly inappropriate and un-PC parodies that were technically legal? Oh my God, these are amazing. <clears throat> now, we both know... Um, there's great, um, again, I don't know what to call these entities, such as The Onion. Oh my such gosh, as I have a great- Hard Drive. I have such a great are, story for this. They, they, parody They based. do nothing but parody. Yeah. And yet, we would have, qu more frequently than you would believe, <laughs> people would see these posts about Nintendo and truly believe this was real. People inside the company- People who should know better. Email us. And say, Mr. Miyamoto said what? <laughs> one time, I will not, uh, let me try to be, hold on, let me try to be really vague on this one because I was like, <laughs> this is, you know what I'm going to say, right? This was an all time like, what? The, <laughs> one time, the person that was spoofed, that was parodied in the post, oh. contacted me and said, I don't remember saying this. <laughs> Do you remember me saying this in an interview? And I was like, oh, honey, this is a fake post. This is, you, you did not say this, sweetie. Like, it, you did not. And then that person was like, oh, thank goodness. Wow. <laughs> it was the actual person that they spoofed. Call I, me. 
Occasionally, Japan would see these, and they would also be concerned. I will give them the credit, though. That's pretty annoying. They, yeah. they, they don't understand what the onion is. Right. So I'm not right. mad at them. But it was really funny. Right. That it's like, I don't even remember what I said, and I need you to yeah. tell me if I did say this. The pe- these people should know better. This is so that's, funny. That's all I have to say about it. And them. also, I really like these cards. I think Jigglypuff can be a Bodhi contender. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Caked up. Hullfish is next. So the new game project I'm the QA lead of mentioned that I'll occasionally be flown to Japan. I've never been, and I never expected to be there for work. Do you two have any tips so I'm not Aww. accidentally disrespectful to anyone? This that's sounds very fun. That's nice. <clears throat> How fun for you. Um... Yeah, it's very orderly in Japan. So I think one thing to remember is like, like follow the signs. Like people only, like you, you walk in one direction on one side of the thing. You walk in the other direction on the other side of the thing. Escalators. Don't be the guy that stands in I'll, the walking lane. I want to say this. What? The expectations for foreigners in Japan are so low. It's a little bit different. I mean, me. you should have the personal goal of like, I want to follow the norms and I, yeah. and I don't want to secretly offend anyone. Right. But it seems, from, from what I've seen, the expectation is, like, shockingly low. It's different for me because I could be mistaken. I right, think. right. So I, I'm extra careful. Um, but I would just say, like, it's very, it's very orderly. So yes. it's, like, very well labeled, like, what you are supposed to be doing in right. public areas. Like, just read the sign. Just take a moment to understand the sign and, like, not do the thing yeah. that the sign doesn't say. Two, two little things I'll say. If you're going there, you can bring a gift. The person visiting brings, oh, yeah, bring brings gift. the gift. Might be counterintuitive. Yeah. You, if you bring a sm- it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Mm-hmm. Just a small little something. It's also nice to bring a gift um, from like your hometown right, right. or from your city um, because that's like what the tradition is. They will love that. So we bring always bring like coffee and chocolate. Yeah. The other yeah. one that can be tricky is like the shoes on, shoes off dynamic. Mm. If you haven't like lived that it can be tricky. And the one that is especially tricky is like some restaurants. So it's like you go in, you take your shoe off, and then you go to your table. But if you need to go to the bathroom, they have these like communal slippers right. at the bathroom. And a lot of times you you got to remember like take the slippers off. Do not wear those communal slippers back to the table. Yeah. Like that, the bathroom slippers don't, can't be near the that, food. That will be a <gasps> moment yeah. if you do that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. Oh I've, come, I've come close to doing that a few times. Like whoops. It's too many, it's too many ons and offs. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, they they are extremely forgiving. Yeah, and probably more so now since there hasn't been a lot of like tourism. They're probably like everyone forgot how to be like. This a is human. why we locked you guys up. That's right. <clears throat> um, Silver six four seven seven is next. Some tech and gaming companies are known for intentionally leaking some details to the press. For example, to soften the ground before news of a delay, change in features, price, or addressing a bug or critical issue. Has this ever happened at Nintendo? If not, was it discussed? <laughs> this, no. This never happened. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo is so anti. Like, did we talk about leaks last week? This is giving companies a lot of credit. I really don't think... I think this is like an urban legend. I don't think this actually happens. I don't think it I happens mean, maybe, anywhere. Maybe like somewhere somebody is like big braining this, but it's hard enough to just do it straight, on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think I think this is like a PR urban legend that people yeah. are leaking things on purpose. <clears throat> I do think that, you know, most times, 99.9% of the times, it is planned. And even if it like is planned to maybe look like a leak, it's probably planned still. This, it did come up maybe once or twice of like, what if we did this? And people would be intrigued, but then they would ask, well, how would we do it? Yeah, and then that's and where you kind of, uh, uh, I don't know. No. Yeah. We're gonna like leak it to like media yeah. accidentally. Like, what are you supposed to do? Right, yeah. Right. Um, Zeroid is next. Regarding the 3DS, I think many people at first definitely had a wow moment in seeing a stereoscopic 3D effect without having to don any eyewear, myself included. I'm even in the apparent minority of players who always had the 3D slider turned up. That being said, it certainly seemed like the gimmick fizzled out despite being such a unique technology. What were your honest thoughts of the 3D feature on the 3DS when it was first revealed? Did you think it was something that you would be using frequently? Why do you think it didn't quite capture everyone's interest the way it seemed like it might? Yeah, I remember the whole glasses free three glasses free 3D was like the line that we were trotting out for 3DS. I actually am very like sensitive to 3D, and I think the the thing that got me. Um, 
that made mm -hmm. me like feel kind of uncomfortable playing with the 3D on was that if you moved it in any way outside Ooh, of this like very specific mm -hmm. like limited scope of your vision, it would break the 3D effect and then you would just see two images. Yeah. And it gave me like motion sickness. Um, oh. So I didn't really love it. Um, but yeah, like if you held it perfectly still and didn't move your hand at all, the 3D looks cool, I suppose. It's a pretty amazing technology still. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen pop up. I mean, obviously 3D is not as popular as it was, but yeah. I mean, I'm sure this has improved and it is impressive when you do it in certain places. So, yeah. I mean, I was, when I first heard like, oh, we got a system that does 3D and you don't need glasses, like, what do you, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I couldn't even comprehend. Yeah. And I still don't know how that works. It's pretty amazing. It is amazing. Uh, I did not end up using it all the time because yeah. it did, you do get fatigue. And I remember the, the first time I did it, again, it was another file under the conference room and we'll show you some secret stuff. <laughs> I got a pretty massive headache. I had a big headache, yeah. So you do have to like build up your tolerance for yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of like VR stuff. <clears throat> something. Yeah. The other thing too is like I would do a thing where I would turn it on to look at the 3D for a and second. And then turn it off. And then turn it back on. Like, that was cool. Okay. <laughs> That's neat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it became like exactly what you said, like a gimmick. Right. Um, which is why I don't think it took off. Yeah, yeah. Sneezkov is next. A kitten Krista, if you were... Pikmin Sneezkov. Yes. If you're able to pick any country or countries for the next Pokemon region, what would they be? I'd personally love to see a Pokemon region based on China. I think the region offers very diverse wildlife options and unique landmarks, and Chinese folklore could have many ideas for legendary Pokemon designs. Ooh. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's see. I, I feel like they've been more so in like the European realms recently for Pokemon. I think this one's supposed to be like Spain. Based on Spain, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it would France, be France. They had France. England. Yeah. England. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Every we did Hawaii. With, every place with good wine. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder what's, I wonder what's, what's going the, on what's there. What's the theme here? Um, I, I like the idea of going back to like a more Eastern kind of region. Mm -hmm. I feel like Arceus kind of had that feel of more well, yeah. like... yeah, that felt very yeah, you know, old like Japan. old Japan, which was kind of cool. Like, yeah, so I would say like maybe... Hmm, maybe like a... Like, Malaysia or something like that. Okay. So you get sort of the island. Yeah. Because I really like the Alolan region, mm -hmm. the, the tropical yeah. vibes, but it would be nice to get that for like a more of like a Asian culture as well. I'm going to zag on this question mm. and say I, I really loved the new setting of, of Legends Arceus, of yeah. the time of being mm -hmm. like a prequel. And I'm yeah. going to say, let's, let's do more of that, more different time periods, even like Sometimes you see like, oh, this is the prehistoric Pokemon. What if you have like a cave, like caveman style, oh, yeah. like Pokemon? That would be game? really cool. That could be neat. Or right? you could do like medieval France, sure, for like the Galar region yes. or something like that. I think there's, uh, yeah, beyond just like the location of the regions and what those are based on, you can do different things with time. That was such a great hook of, of legends. I like, think so too. I love and even that. like the ancient looking Pokeballs, like yes. the little like, details like that, was so cool. Yes. Yeah. Tech Magic has our next question. Since Elon is a big topic Ooh. of discussion recently, what was the initial reaction to the SNL skit where he was dressed like Wario? Anger. Well, Confusion. I, I will say this. Going back to the breathless reporting, there was always a lot of excitement <laughs> when the mainstream media would, or like a big show like Saturday Night Live. Like a, like or, a late night or a late show. Night, would talk yeah. about this. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow, they mentioned us. Yeah. But then you would actually look at what they were saying. And you're like, have like, a... Oh no, they explain? mentioned us in this way. How am I explain? Or they told this like off color joke, like, how am I going to explain this? Exactly. So it was kind of like equal parts excitement and then like. I don't think there was, I think it was mm. an initial excitement when you didn't know what it was, but the, the actual like reaction to Elon as Wario in the court setting <laughs> skit was like anger. Yeah. Because people did not like that right. at all. Right. And what was said in that, it was not great. So. I think there was even like a moment where they were like, how do we keep NC off from seeing this? Right. It's like, well, you can because it's on like national TV. <laughs> it's on the internet. It's on the internet. The pieces are adding up. What's the agenda, Elon? <laughs> uh, oh, I got corrected on this person's name. It's not Shurikan. It's Shuriken. Aha. Okay. Like, oh, uh, Keenan and Kel. What? Great show. Shuriken's getting us payback for the pronunciation here. <laughs> Who created the Nintendo Minute outro song? I remember that one day you guys suddenly had an outro song with a podcast or 64 ever get an mm. outro song like that. Well, 
Dale North, who created the Nintendo Minute intro song, created the outro song. Right. And Adriana Figueroa Figueroa. was the singer for the Nintendo Minute outro song, which is amazing. And Dale North wrote the um, Kit and Krista music. Well, you missed an important detail. What? We wrote the lyrics to that. Oh, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> Music by Dale North. <laughs> Lyrics Lyric, yes. by Kit and Krista, Krista and Kit. Kit and Krista. Oh, now yeah. this is the, now we're flipping it. <laughs> we're flipping it. Now we're flipping it. <laughs> My lyrics are better than yours. No, I'm just totally kidding. You actually wrote most of it, and I kind of. I mean, it is that. like a 10 second song. It's like four lines. <laughs> Maybe. Do you remember the words? Of course. Do you really? Yeah. Sing it right now. No. Oh. <laughs> um. But yes. Will we ever have a? Song? Well, when we, we did do new music. Basically every year we yeah. would do some sort of new music. So we're getting, I don't know, we're getting up to the one year mark. Maybe that's a thing we can do. Yeah, I like her song for Kit and Krista. That though. song's excellent. It's so good. Got a lot of you said that. Yeah, thanks, Dale. <laughs> um, but if we wanted to add lyrics to something, that would be fun mm. too. Yeah, we can talk to Dale about that. Dale's a, a, a great friend of ours. Yes. So and he will he will be the official music writer for all yes. things for us yes. until the until the end of, end of time. time. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Maverick Nate has our next question. What are your thoughts on the rise of songs with lyrics being used more often in video games? With the announcement of Ed Sheeran's Celestial being included in the new Pokemon games, it made me wonder if the industry will shift to more songs written and performed by famous musicians in place of the traditional BGM we've had for years. Will we reach a point like we did with the Mario movie where minor talent is pushed out in favor of big name celebrities? Before you answer this, Mm -hmm. The next question is also about this, so I want to read that and we can answer them together. Okay. Simon, I've noticed that as time goes on, more and more Nintendo games have gotten theme songs. You have Life Light for Smash, Savior was for Astral Chain, Jump Up Superstar for Mario Odyssey, The Edge of Dawn, and Fire Emblem Three Houses, and the list goes on. Xenoblade and Bayonetta also have had several songs per game even. Yeah. Any song with lyrics you really like? I remember Krista saying she thought Life Light was corny. I'm currently obsessed with Moonlight Serenade from Bayonetta 3, but I do have a soft spot for Lost in Thoughts all alone from the Fire Emblem from, from Fire Emblem Fates. Nice. Yeah. Oh, big music question. Um, I don't I, I like um, you know, when there are music with lyrics in games, if it's done in the in the right way. I thought Xenoblade actually did it very well. Yeah. And the the part in chapter five that caused everyone to break down into into um, Tears was was a huge part to do with the song that was played along to that really um, emotional scene. Mm-hmm. And that song was beautiful. I, I listened to that song for like weeks after I beat the game. And it was, it's such, it's so well done. It was so perfectly placed. Um, and the lyrics are so perfectly matched to, you know, that, that part of the game. So I really like that. Um, I, I don't really like the, the just, you know, having a celebrity and like taking a song off of an existing album and yeah. like jamming it into a game just to get that celebrity sort of connection or something like that. So th- that I like a little bit less. Um, I hope it's more so the latter where you're writing original music and yeah. having people that have a connection to the game perform it um, for that specific part of the game to make it, to give it more um, more life. But if it's just like, let's put this Ed Sheeran song <laughs> as a backing track to like whatever is happening in this Pokemon game, like that. Is that not an original song? I don't know, actually. Where he was doing the, for the anniversary, he was working with them. Okay. I don't really like Ed Sheeran. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's, maybe that's, <laughs> right, that's what we're getting at here. No Ed Sheeran for me. Yeah, I, I the question of like, are we going to no longer have traditional music and games. I think it's going to be hard to have like such a big collaboration where an artist is doing like the whole all game. the music. Yeah. That seems far fetched. And probably very like out of reach expense for, wise. for most games. Yeah. And I remember we talked to um, Koji Kondo about like video game music and, and like sort of like what that takes. It's yeah. really different than writing, like making music for an album. Right. Because right. it's like, the stuff that you're doing, some of the some of the music is so repetitive yeah. that you really are like creating it for like a, sp- a specific purpose versus it being right. like a celebrity musician who's writing four minute songs. Yeah. You know. Now I'm trying to think: Are there any exceptions to what I just said? I think one, the original Quake One. I think oh. Trent Reznor of Nine really? Inch Nails did the music for. But he's also done like movie scores. That's true. So he's maybe yeah, got a different perspective on that like sort of thing. And also like a skill set too for that. Right. <clears throat> but the idea of like, well, we're going to, you know, collaborate and come up with like a big theme song. Like 
that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. That's been happening for a long time. When I worked at Namco on the Tales series, they worked with a J-pop star named Bonnie Pink. Oh. Who I actually got to meet and it's quite delightful. That's very cool. Um, so that's been happening for, you know, quite a, quite a long time. Where's the black pink Nintendo collaboration? When is that um, Good question. <laughs> that's a good question. I would like that to happen. That would be awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, any other thoughts on this question? Do you have a favorite <clears throat> song? Jump Up Superstar is easily the best of these. That was a very good yeah. song. Because not only, it, like, it wasn't just like plugged into like, you know, the menu of like press start and that's the song That's what I'm playing. saying. It like, had an important purpose in the game. That's what happened with the Xenoblade songs. <laughs> I'm past that on my YouTube watchers, so I can say, they did kind of overdo it on that song for, for the next like hour or two. I really liked it. it. They maybe less, they dulled the impact by continuing to loop it nonstop for two hours. They just oh, kept... Oh, did they really? Well, I mean, it wasn't like non- oh, nonstop. Oh, I didn't really realize that they did that. But any time it was like, oh, what happened? To- oh, look, now we're going to play the song again. Oh, it's like, the song. Yeah, I know what happened. It's I remember. It's so sad. Oh, you're it? such a... You have a heart of ice. Save it? From your Scandinavian Save roots. it? Save it for the game of the year discussion. This is why you're <laughs> like this. <laughs> why are you like this? <laughs> why? Because your, your heart I'm is I'm me and I can't stop. From Swedish it's a great, it's a temperatures. Great thing. It's a great thing. Okay, we need to move on. All right, Superstar. We have a request in the Superstar section. We do? Switching It Up Underscore wants you to do his reading. Okay. So I don't know if, if that means you go first or I go first. Just when matter. we get to him, okay. you are doing it. All right? Well, do you want me to say that thing, or do you want to say that Aaron? thing? No, I'll go first. Okay. Aaron Hash. Ben Icorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigenverse. Jordan Collette. Kiss my flapjack. Mike Chin. Mister Rogers. Paul Gale Network. Rain Tech. Roy Eschke. Simon Barrera. Switching it up. Underscore. <laughs> Cephazon. The Shark Among Men. VGM Life. Link, the hero of wind. Angela Bycroft. And her big Molly. And Turbocharge Nerd. You have to say Molly. You really? Say Turbocharge Nerd again. Turbocharge Nerd! You can't underplay Turbocharge Nerd. And Molly. Molly's the pig. Oh we really gosh. like Molly. <laughs> yes, Do we you all like Molly. We love Molly. We love Molly. Okay, yes. anyways. Uh, one Up Club. I will go first. All right. Aaron Burgundy. Adam Edwards. Jean Malari. Ale Alejandro. Alexandra Pratt. Astro Dev. Bagel. Bookum Dano. Brad SF56. Bruce Stash. Chancellor Fairley. Christopher Lay. Cozy Tar. Captain Cinnamon Bun. Captain Alex. C Roper 17. Daniel Cold. Daniel Valencia. Dachshund. Doodoo Face. Douglas Chomix. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. Espars 50. Ezrato. Fart Pre 69. <laughs> Perfect. Waiting for that one. Fred Rossi. Car. Garrett Hullfish. Yin Shi. Israel or Izzy. Jay Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jackie Z. JK99. JBJ. Jeff Yoakum. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jesse Hernandez. Ja- John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Hemmerly. Joseph Tejes. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Jess Camtro. Kai Comercio. Kawa 2796. Kelp Shake. Kevin Delane. Christopia Party with me. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Kyle LaBeouf. Kyler Nelson. Lanelle Stickman. Lego My Frogo. Lena. Lit. Lucas Pico. Mad Dog 5981. Malfarink. Marky Man 64. Matthew Rewald. Mecha Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Cravens. Mikey. Mr. Andy Pong. Murph. Mytran. Nazar. Nathan Burkhart. Panda, oh, Panda Buns. Piano Psychopath. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. P.S. Wee. Quinn Hardigan. Raver. Ray Charon. Ryuji Utsuho Oku. Renee Rivers. Audrey Kern. Rob Osborne. Rox. Rianetta. Sam Newland. Sharif Jackson. Sheer Cold Vanille. Shinryu. Slowbro. Schmiggles. Silly Ferret. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citron. Teppo Lindbergh. Thomas Alvarez. Travis Torline. Troopage. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tyler Geist. Video Game Stupid. Beautiful Dandy. Virtual Bot. Wicked Davy. Will Ernst. Will Johnson. Zudiver. Zelgaroth. And Droid. Droid. Okay. Wow. There's a lot of like T names that were added. I feel. Why like. did you laugh at that name? What name? That name. Why that did what you, you said? Why did you laugh? It was funny. I don't get it. I really liked it. I don't understand. It was funny. Anyways, 
That's it. Yeah, so if you want us to read your name in a funny way, then <laughs> tell us and we'll do it. Um, okay. Don't forget to subscribe to Patreon. It is patreon.com slash Kit and Cressa. Let us read your, your name in a funny way. Be part of our beautiful Discord community and um, listen to some bonus Q&As and get some early access yeah. to these episodes. Yeah. It's very fun. If you are listening on audio, please uh, give us a five-star rating. Leave a brief review. That helps us a lot. If you're watching on video, please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Yay! Please do. And don't forget to follow us on our other social media channels. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. I think that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Another perfect episode. We will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.